All right, let's say you have a bad diet. Let's say you don't exercise and you have bad sleep. Which one of those things should you tackle first? In other words, which one of those things will cause the biggest positive impacts on your health, fat loss, and muscle gain? Sleep, believe it or not, it's sleep. If all those three things suck with you, tackle sleep first. It'll give you the biggest bang for your buck. Dang, that's like when you know the answer, but like the teacher's not calling you. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Justin. It's okay. Yeah. You know, hey, sleep. Could you, uh, like, no way I would have believed that when I was younger. No way. Oh, no. In my 20s as a trainer, I didn't even talk about sleep. Sleep? What are you talking about? It's one of those things that I think is, um, I, like, I don't think you've ever said that someone, someone go like, oh, no way. I didn't know that. Like, I feel like everybody knows it, yet we just ignore it. Yeah. Doesn't it feel like that? Yeah. It's like. I know I, I remember hearing that as a trainer early on. I knew that sleep was important. I think we we assume because we do it that we it must be and I get up and I do my day and I go about my life that I'm getting good sleep. I think mm -hmm. people overestimate the quality of their sleep. And so when you hear things like a trainer tell you, hey, uh, when you're asking questions like, oh, what supplement should I take or what workout or what diet? And you go like, well, you know what you could do? is you could focus on optimizing your sleep and get more gains than any of those things you just asked me about mm -hmm. by simply just sleeping better. They go, oh, I already sleep really good. Uh, yeah. you know, so I, I think that most people overestimate the quality of their sleep. Here's how important it is. Uh, out of diet, exercise, and sleep, uh, the and one you can go, the one that you can go the least without. In other words, the one that you cannot have that will cause major health issues in the quickest time of sleep. Mm -hmm. You have no sleep within 72 hours. Your odds of psychosis are actually through the roof. You cannot <laughs> eat for like weeks and it would suck, but you'd be okay. You cannot move for weeks and it would suck, but it wouldn't be like sleep. Sleep, you you couldn't survive a week without sleep. And they've done studies on this. Uh, yeah. In fact, it's considered cruel and unusual punishment by the Geneva Convention. Um, it affects your hormones. It affects your cravings. It dramatically increase it affects your ability to build muscle and burn body fat. Now, the truth is all three of those things contribute to each other. In other words, working on your diet is likely to make you want to be more active. It's also likely to improve your sleep, right? Exercising properly is likely to improve your sleep. It tends to motivate people to want to eat better. And then sleep, right? You get better sleep, you have more energy, you want to work out, and you have less cravings. But the one with the biggest impact is sleep. And everybody who's got – people with poor health tend to have all three of them kind of off. Nobody tackles sleep first unless it's so bad and so obvious that they're just losing their mind. Everybody tackles the other stuff first. It's the, it's the sleep. Yeah, it's funny. I was just thinking like I was at a point where I would say the majority of my clients were would come in and be like, oh, yeah, I know how – important you say sleep is i know how important recovery is you know and i do those things but also like how many times can i come in can i come in twice can i do this yeah, can i do that yeah. like it's like this is just stuff they just want to just push it aside and it it really is like the biggest focal point that they should have in order to optimize everything they're doing to get to the result that they want to get but it's a funny thing that like over time and sometimes you have to kind of like play into that just to get them to see it for themselves but, but you know for uh and, and that's again this is something you learn later as a mature trainer but it's just like it's so overlooked it's so and there's so many aspects of training that uh get affected by this yeah. i've been i've been waiting for the next time one of you brought up sleep because of how obsessed i am with the eight sleep app like, so I had everything hooked up. I've talked about how much I love the thing and the AI version. Of yeah. it. But dude, the the actual tracking, the the metrics on it are wild, the stuff it tracks. So of you course- You said you liked it better than the Aura. I do. I do. So it uh, obviously it tracks REM sleep, deep sleep. It does heart rate, does HRV. It does my breath rate. So I can see the difference of like oh, wow. different nights and the quality. And it's of sleep literally a pad over your bed yes, that cools dude. and warms your bed. It, it tells me uh, if I took longer than 15 minutes or not to fall asleep, how quick I was up, like scores me, everything. It's, and then, and then uh, based and, off of this. And then based off of that, it adjusts on its own. I know. That's so crazy. And, you know, I, I didn't realize how good it was until I noticed that like, so when I first got into it, you have to like set it up and you have to... um you, you choose like, oh, I, at 8 a.m. or 8 p.m., I want it to, the, the cooling to kick on and I want to put it at minus eight because I want it really cold. 
And so initially it starts at what you you put it at. But then again, the AI kicks in and then it will just naturally it figures out what yeah, it figures out. Rate. And so it's now found this place where I like before this was my attitude. Like I want it ice cold because I'd rather be too cold than it be even close to being not cold enough. Right. And so I put it super cold. But now it's got to a point where I don't ever feel like that. I climb into bed and it feels nice. I never feel freezing cold. It never allows me to get hot. What's your number then? Were you close? No, you it actually it actually was higher than what I thought. So I used to go minus eight. And right. I, the other night I like I got on there and I'm like, I wonder what it's at right now. Because actually Katrina made quiet. Yeah. She goes, Oh, I think the eight sleep kicked off. And I'm like, oh no, it's just it's probably not having to run because it's got me right where it wants me temperature wise. And so I, it was like 10, 11 o'clock at night when she said this to me, we're laying in bed and I rolled over and I looked just to see it. And I was like, oh, it had me at minus two. Oh, wow. And wow. so it didn't have to have me all the way at minus eight. So it's like, hmm. it's a trip how, it, and I, it, what I, what I recognize is that I just feel good and I never feel hot. I never feel cold. It's just the right temperature. Now, what about Katrina's side? Have you looked at her numbers to see? No, I don't pay attention. I would love to <laughs> see the difference. Yeah. yeah. Well, you I mean, know why? Because you guys are so different. She, she runs hers hot or off. Yeah. So she doesn't even let the AI do the thing. Uh -uh. She oh, she won't she even do the app. She don't even care about that much because I, I, she always wants to be warmer than whatever I have the bed set right, at, even right. though it's on her side. I was side. just curious to see like what no. it found out for her. Yeah, she's not. I mean, and she's not her. Katrina's thing with sleep is light, so that Pitch like rock. yes. Does she wear an eye mask? Yes. Okay. I had to get her a night mask because it's like we have like these in our curtains. There's like these slight. And that's it has just a crack in the curtains and a little bit of light coming through. It dis disrupts her. Interesting. Where I'm not like that at all. It could I could totally have. You know what's things. weird about this conversation is that um like I remember I've I've said this before. My I remember my grandfather um vi was visiting from Sicily and um this was years ago. So I was probably I don't know seventeen. No, no, I was younger, fourteen, fifteen. And he had never been out of the country or I don't even think he'd ever been off the island of Sicily. But anyway, he comes over and um, we had, I had weights in the backyard and so I'm working out and he was making, he was laughing and making fun of me and he goes, just go to work if you want to work out, lift heavy things, you know, because to him, yeah. he thought it was so weird that I actually- It's like a waste of energy. Voluntarily picked heavy things up and put them down. I'm not building anything. I'm not right. doing anything. It was because I have to do this. In order to you know Im improve my fitness, because the modern world has taken that out completely, right? The same thing with diet. Like we used to eat a whole natural food diet because that's all there was, right? That's all there was. Mm -hmm. All there was was whole natural foods, unless you starved. If you were a successful hunter and, and all that stuff, your diet was probably pretty damn healthy in yeah. comparison to what the average person eats. Of course, barring that you that lots of people starve because it was hard to get food. Same thing with sleep. Sleep was probably never an issue. Because our bodies evolved for most of human history, the sun went down. Yeah, it got cooler. Yeah. Your brain registered less and less and less light, and then darkness, and then it's cool. And then you go and you lay down, and you're also probably exerted a lot of energy yeah, throughout I, I the day. I think there's two big factors yeah. to the point you're making right now. I think that uh, being exhausted from like manual you exerted labor yourself and no tech. No technology. Those two things, I think, have made the mm -hmm. biggest disruption and of our And think sleep. about the light that we had. It was fire. Yeah. Like, oh, you want some light? Go make a fire. How bright is that? Not very bright at all. It's a, yeah. it's a red glowing. By the way, the light that affects your sleep the least is the red glowing light mm -hmm. that comes off of a fire. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and then our diet was, you know, whole natural, all that stuff. So I I don't think people ever were like, yeah, God, I have issues. It was, yeah, it was, with it was sleep. a struggle to no, sleep. Yeah. It was probably more <laughs> like, I need to stay up because I heard something. Yeah, then you add in all the things that were hopped up on, right? Caffeine and Adderall and just like, and the the, the low level stress that you're getting all day long. And it's just, it's. A, it's just, we, we, we've organized our lives in a way that's so unnatural that we now have to find ways to essentially use technology and use, uh, yeah. you know, techniques and methods to uh, to uh, uh, to get our primitive bodies our bodies are not advanced the same body look yeah. my body is identical technology is just teaching us that the old ways were superior yeah so it's like we did all this <laughs> stuff people are like we don't like the dark you know make lights oh electricity is invented oh great you know oh god this back-breaking labor is so hard let's make it easier let's make it easier let's make it super easy in fact you never have to move yeah you know it's like and then oh food Wow, we can make it taste so damn good, yeah. and you can have any flavor, and we can do it. And so we're really, we're literally suffering the consequences of us figuring out this is what we want. Of course, it's not what we need; it's what we think we want. So, like eight sleep is, it cracks me up because it's literally tech. 
Yeah. That's like, okay, you live in the modern world, which oh, it's means- amazing tech. I mean, yeah. it's, it's funny as you're describing all of the metrics and everything, I couldn't help but think when we leave to go uh, travel and, and go elsewhere to do content and whatnot, uh, Courtney will have uh, Arlo sleep in bed with her, you know, just as a protection thing. <laughs> It'd be so funny to see the breath score. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like going it's going to mess, yeah. uh, mess up your algorithm. Yeah, right? exactly. You're going to screw everything up. I mean, think about that. <laughs> That's so, pretty funny. Yeah. I wonder what his temperature <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, You sleep best you with uh, of all the Of all the cool, I mean, you know how neat, like when I think back the last like eight, nine years for us of like all the cool biohacking tools and things that we've, we've messed with and we've got given to us and but by far, uh, that has to be one of the best investment ones out of all. Yeah. Like, I mean, and, and I guess this really depends on who you are. Maybe not you. Like, maybe you're somebody who sleeps great already. Maybe you're somebody who's not affected by temperature. Um, but I'm ultra sensitive to you, the, the temperature. Like, you, know it's, it's, you know what's crazy yeah, about temperature this? Temperature for me, too. Because that's, I mean, that is literally breakthrough technology. It is absolute, insane breakthrough technology. It uses AI to adjust all the things it can adjust so that it maximizes your individual sleep. Do you yeah. know what it's going to be like at some point in the near future? There's going to be tech that's going to be able in real time tell you the kind of workout, the intensity, the weight you should use, the diet you yeah. should eat today, right like now. The perfect dose individually for you. Yeah, like it'll you'll literally have a, crazy. A, a watch and it'll be like, uh, you need to have 16.7 uh, grams of protein, this many carbs, this many whatever, to maximize whatever. You're, oh, stop your workout, you've reached your threshold, or today, take the day off. It's going to be like that. Well, I mean, what you're pointing out too is what, and, and you know what I think? We'll have just as many fat people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to have all the answers. We'll turn all the sensors off like now. It won't matter. It, that's why, like, I mean, this is too, like, this is why I always get annoyed by the, the you know, Instagram, TikTok. I have a darker that, thought around this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you, it's like people are always debating, like, and arguing on, online or, like, over the, the science, right? And, and it's like, that's not the problem. Like, it's it's not a lack of awareness. Like, those, the, all these tools are awesome. And, mm. and I like more awareness. And I, I like the tools. But it's not what's going to solve the problem for people. It's behavioral, mm -hmm. of course. It's that's where the problem is at. Like you can get you, and and so we're just going to keep getting to this place where we're closer. I mean, I think we're going to be able to walk into your bedroom in the future, and something will. It's oh, welcome, Adam. And then the whole the humidity, the temperature, my bed, everything yeah. gets optimized. You know, immediately for me specifically. Like we're going to have stuff like that, yeah. no doubt. But it's not. So here's my darker thought on that. Okay. My darker thought is like. Do you know what happens when you take a, a lion that's been born and raised in captivity and you put it out in the wild? Yeah, it can't hunt. It dies. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it can't hunt. It can't survive. Yeah. Doesn't know, yeah. So if it gets to that point, and by the way, for people who are like, oh, come on, you're being dramatic. We're already there. Like if the shit hit the fan right now, how many people, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to survive. I don't know what the hell to do without electricity and technology. I'd be like, what would I be catching squirrels? What would I be doing? I, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. So, um, Squirrels have meat. but it's going to be even, it's going to be even worse than that where people are going to be like, <clears throat> please tell me what to do. Tell me what direction you need to go. Give me my dose of antidepressant. Give me my today's YouTube giveaway is map power lift. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale going on some workout programs. These are bundles. In fact, we have the new to weightlifting bundle. We have the body transformation bundle, the new year extreme intensity bundle, and the body transformation bundle 2.0. All of them available right now at mapsjanuary.com. One more thing. If you're a trainer or coach, we just released our new course for trainers and coaches. This is a legit course, 40 hours of instructional video teaching you how to get leads, teaching you how to build your business, teaching you how to close deals, how to get your results, uh, your clients better results. And because it's also a launch, you get, you get free stuff. Free Maps Prime program, free Prime Pro program, free mods, free guides. You get access to a private group, $200 off. The first 100 people, by the way, get to come here live for training. Anyway, if you're interested, all you got to do is go to uh, mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com. All right, back to the show. You know, this is, you You just reminded me of something I actually wanted to talk to. It's actually, I wanted to have this off air, but fuck it, we'll just have it on air right now. Um, I've been meaning to talk. You just, you just perked up, Doug, right there. Well, I've I, I've been wanting to to sell sell you on watching sports more, right? And I, I was I had this thought with my buddies the other day, just like, um, and I know you like you love to always tie everything back to evolution, yes, right? You do yeah. such a great job of like cool. evolutionary. This is why you just did it with the fire and lights and stuff like that. 
Sports has to be the greatest example of real time, your ability to look at real time evolution. What do you mean? Because of how much as humans we put towards optimi optimizing the mm -hmm. athlete or the person, mm -hmm. everything from training the body to nutrition. Yeah. That Finding a better body type. That in decades, yeah. we see leaps. Yeah, we that do. you don't see. You, yeah. Things that take hundreds of years, mm -hmm. some thousands of years of evolution for the body to change or things to happen, right. you actually get a, a, the ability to see. I, I, in my lifetime, I've seen the hu humans evolve athletically in a, in a, in a, to a, a, like if you looked at basketball, just in 1950 something, and you compared it today. Oh, nobody lifted weights. It was like what till like the bulls. What they've got the body to be able to do, like you could not pluck that guy from 1950 and put him into the 1970s game. and 80s. You know? Dr. That's what, J that's is what, like. This, that's what I'm saying. Is like yeah. like and, and uh, look at what we do in extreme uh, X game sports. Like mm -hmm. with the, I mean, it was just a couple decades ago when yeah. it was great. Our Once heads exploded. Pits, it was Somebody over. did a backflip on yeah. a bike and our heads exploded. Yeah. Now you have guys landing three of those now. We talked about the snowboard guy the other day who did the six three sixties or whatever. Like, <laughs> I mean, and and why that is is because you know ev evolution happens naturally over time. Like the the weaker yeah. the this stuff dies off, and yeah. only the strong stuff keeps around. Well, in sports you force that hi like you hyper. There's also a mental. Uh, th what's really weird about humans is uh, like just how powerful the mind is. Like the most famous example is the the four minute mile. That's a great story in mm -hmm. uh, in our mental capacity and evolution. Like literally, I mean, I, I'm sure people have heard this before. Yeah, you make the impossible possible. It was debated as to whether or not, and there were scientists that literally came out and said, it is impossible physiologically for humans to run faster mm -hmm. than a four-minute mile. There was all these debates or whatever. Rogers Bannister, I think was his name, was the first person to break it. Once he broke it, and I think he got three minutes and 59 seconds or something like that, right? Yeah, and this was like dirt tracks. Yeah, but once he broke it, that, that sudden, next year, yeah. I think two other people broke it. And now, now you, I think we have high school track. We do. We have high school mm -hmm. kids that do it every year. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's no big deal. Yeah. And that is your, that's another great example of like how- It's weird. In sports, right? there is this, we, uh, uh, this uh, collection of humans that are hyper-focused on one task and evolving it and pushing the boundaries and limits every single day and looking for ways to optimize every little aspect yeah. of it that shaving a fraction. I mean, it's the greatest example of, of evolution. Fast forward. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. think about that. Like, there's nothing else I could think of in the world that gives you a glimpse of of that in real time. We have to look back at yeah. history books or tell old stories of, oh, it used to be this way and now we've evolved this way. But- you actually kind of get a little bit of a glimpse of that yeah. when you watch you know they sports. Used, you know the belief around athletes used to be? Uh, in the early Olympics, the belief was that the perfect athlete was, I think, 5'9", 160-something yeah, yeah. pounds. For all sports. Yeah, like that's the perfect athlete. Yeah. And then uh, they started to figure out like, no, no, no. If you do you know, shot put, yeah. you're probably going to look like this. If you do distance, you're going to look like this. And CrossFit kept that standard, though. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, like talk about evolution. It's been a long time. I haven't, I haven't jabbed in a long time, and I just felt that opportunity. Uh, the evolution of TVs. Have you guys seen like to, to speak positively about like technology? Um, so instead of just like a big screen, I'm not talking about projectors or anything. There's this new technology where I guess like the background of whatever's being portrayed on screen, they can basically make it see through. So, huh? so saying like you have a white background, but you have the actual like physical, um, like dimensions of whatever object is on there, like behind it, you can see through the TV to the wall. Oh, okay. so you can see so stuff. It's like opaque, like behind. You can see stuff, but then. Uh, so basically the it's being projected on a clear screen. It's, on like a glass screen? Yeah, it's like it's like a clear screen, but then uh, the images are actually just the images. What's it called? It's not TV? background. It. It's not yeah. like black background. It's not like white background. Yeah. It's like transparent. Do you have a name? Why would I want to see it, my wall, though? I, I want to see an example of this. What, uh, yeah, of it, it was on TechCrunch. It was like a, a, an article about it. Do you know what the they TV's have like called? The new, I don't know. Well, look at, look, look at my notes. Look, Andrew or Doug, maybe find yeah, you guys. I want to see this. I know. I want to see too because I'm trying to get an example of like how this. I'm thinking, I it sounds, it sounds cool. It's kind of like, hard to describe, you it, know, like it without visually showing it to you guys. I mean, I talk to you guys about the TVs now that are the wireless and everything like that. That's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. I'll, yeah. You guys find it because to me right now, I'm envisioning watching a movie. And there then, it is. Okay. I see a transparent TV. What's it called? 
You, you, you can text it too, by the way, yes. if you want, Justin. Yeah, send it to me. I can put it up on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just going to keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep you guys wondering. Cool stuff, but I'm not going to show you. Cool, you the, cool, cool story, day, dude. Did I tell you the other day, my dad tried, tried, to, tried, to, take a picture too, of my, tried to take a picture of my, my, my phone screen? What? On his phone, he's like, "Oh, let me get that real quick." And he goes and takes a picture of him. Like, Somebody just did that. To I'm me. Like, Transparent TV. I'm like, Dad, you know, I, could, I, could oh, yeah. I could text that to you. What is it? Pull it up. Let's look yeah, at this. So, yes, it is a transparent TV. So basically, you can just see through it. Right. It's like a glass. Then. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, cool. it's very I think that's really though. cool, dude. I, I would, would have never thought. Like, I guess. Of like I that. guess if you're not watching movies, it would be a cool art piece, right? I, yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to think of like. I mean, it looks cool. Yeah. You wouldn't want to watch movies like that, though. Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, it's interesting because the background is basically missing from the image that's being projected right. there. So it could look like a fish tank or something. Yeah, so like what that. what like if I was watching a movie, what would that look like? You wouldn't want a movie like that. Yeah, I don't know if a movie would work. I think it yeah, it might just be cuz you know how like the um the uh portraits so, so like uh Samsung had the ones that were like the, frame TV or like wallpaper and Yeah, stuff. it almost yeah. looked like a, a painting or whatever. I think it's maybe it's just like the, the setting look, for art. You know what this would be cool for? I'll tell you right now what I think. Well, this is how I think. Uh, Porn. It would be a, no. What? No. <laughs> That's where your brain always goes. No, it isn't. Just... <laughs> That's not even a funny joke. <laughs> it's not even funny, no. man. It's not funny. <laughs> get... That's what makes it up. Because you know it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I'm sorry. Dude, go ahead. No. Sorry. I haven't Anyways. watched, I haven't watched right, right. any of that okay. in months. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Anyway, yeah. so I put, uh, it would be cool, like a department store, the, the, the windows of the department store where you're looking in and you can see in the department store, but they can display whatever they want uh, on these cool. screens. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's I don't know. I feel like there's creators that will see an opportunity here to like <laughs> make things for that specifically. You know, how would you, make, I don't know what, what the benefit of that porn? looks like. But, <laughs> <laughs> what was the benefit of fucking, <laughs> you don't feel like you're, you're just hyper focused on the, like what you're talking house. about, bro. <laughs> the action going on, not yeah. the, the furniture. Yeah. 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 Does anyways. the Oculus porn ever take off? Did that take off? Uh, I don't know. That was a thing, you know. When it, when it, I know when it came you know, out. I, I got to tell you, I'm trying to find an expert. I'm actually uh, having our team pursue someone to talk about uh, pornography. You the, need an expert for that? Yeah. Well, not no. The date uh, on it's on the damage it oh, causes. Yeah. And the I mean, we talk about that. Dude. Oh, dude, the yeah. data <clears throat> is insane. You guys know this is it's one of the worst things in society right now for mental health, both for men and women. Do you know what the rate of divorce? You want to know this? How much the rate of divorce goes up if if one one or both of the partners watch pornography? Doubles. Mm. Wow. Doubles. It's insane. What if it's like, okay, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> 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 He's about to reveal himself. <laughs> what if it's yours? Anyways. Yeah, yeah, what if you guys are filming? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, what? <laughs> Justin, I'm stop. Just All right. All right. I'm going I'm to change directions here. Um, so uh, my daughter, my... How, let's see how old is she now? 14 months old. By the way, when you stop saying months, at what point? Do you after, immediately. after two years. <laughs> up, after, up to two, two years. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you're two, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Dude, once you turn one, let's like stop it. This is yeah. my child. I, it He's 76 me. months old. Well, you know why? You know why it is? Because uh, clothing months. size. That's right. Because clothing size yeah, goes all the way to 24 months. That's like, right. Yeah, that's so right. it's like. I get it because there's big developmental. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then by the time you're two, you're yeah. toddler. And you're so my 14 month old. I still refuse to say My 14 month old, we've moved to, she eats food, regular food, so hard food. And then we, now we're giving her milk. And I give her raw milk. So I go to Sprouts over here. Whole Foods doesn't even carry it anymore. And she drinks raw milk. I talked about this a long time on the podcast, a long time ago, probably eight or seven years ago on the podcast. I thought I should bring it up again. The benefits of raw milk versus traditional milk. And I looked up some data. Oh, yeah. Digestive yeah. enzymes are in there. Bro. Yeah, when they cook it, bro, they cook they all the good stuff. They take away all the goods. All yeah, the yeah. So, here's, so here's, real quick, here's why milk is pasteurized. A long time ago, when milk started becoming mass produced, People in the U.S. were cramming these cows into these small, tight spaces. They were feeding them yeah, the they waste. They were unhealthy. They were feeding them the waste products from breweries. They used to call it brewer's mash. That's what they would feed the cows. Yeah. The milk was so bad, it would come out with a blue tint, okay? And it was full of bacteria because the, the cows themselves were diseased. Yeah. And kids and people would get sick and die. Louis Pasteur invented pasteurization. By the way, which we, he did was supposed to be used for... I think it was for beer or something else. They ended up using it for uh, milk because it allowed these people to sell sick 
bad milk to the public because you'd boil it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Boom, no bacteria. Now everybody can have it. Yeah. And then they passed laws that said all milk has to be pasteurized or whatever. <clears throat> this is a complete scam, okay? Healthy cows, healthy cows do not produce milk that is dangerous. In fact, it's also far healthier for you. So I brought up some data. And so I don't feed my kids when they're little. I don't give them regular whole milk. I give them raw milk. Mm -hmm. So check this out. There was a study that was published, and this is for allergens, okay? Children who drink raw milk versus traditional pasteurized milk are 50% less likely to develop allergies and 41% less likely to develop asthma, mm. okay? That's just for, for that. It improves skin health. It prevents nutrient deficiencies. I bet you guys didn't know this, but raw milk contains more calcium, more magnesium, more potassium, and many of the the a lot of the nutrients in milk are destroyed through the pasteurization uh, process. So, and also homogenization, which is raw milk. If you let it sit, the the fat separates from the rest, and so you get cream on top. Mm -hmm. You have to shake it before you serve it. Mm -hmm. You know this, Adam, because you used to uh, used to milk cows. Uh, homogenization, they force the milk through these this process where it squeezes the fat into such small particles that it stays suspended in the milk so it no longer separates. Well, what that does is it in, in, increases the odds of the fat getting oxidized. So the fat also can become more damaging in traditional whole milk versus raw milk. So raw milk is just, and yeah. I, and now, why am I telling you this? So my daughter, we give her raw milk. Uh, Jessica went, um, to visit some family in Vegas when they were out there, couldn't find any raw milk, ended up getting traditional whole milk, drank it. When she came back, it was late at night, store wasn't open. So we, we went to a place that was open that had some raw, some regular milk. So my daughter was drinking regular milk and she, she drank it for like a week or whatever. And she started to develop a little bit of eczema. Now she has a tendency to have it, but the eczema was kind of getting worse. And Jessica's like, Oh, what is going on? Like I didn't change her diet. And I'm like, Oh. It's it's the milk. We, quick, I threw out that old crap, got the raw milk, eczema's gone huh. within a few days. Crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Did you see that article I sent you about milk? No. Or, uh, no. Uh, no, no cheese. Did you send it to me? Yeah. Of no, course, I get it? any new article, groundbreaking article about cheese. <laughs> you extending the, life. You are now, <laughs> you are the, now the, the groundbreaking guy with all, che all just, cheese. All if Justin cheese doesn't news. get us a cheese sponsorship, I'll be mad at yeah. some point. They've never Big approached cheese. me. It's, well, the raw company did. They did. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That, the raw milk company sent us all kinds of free stuff. Yeah. Love them. I mean, they, they were, it, was, it was kind of weak. I mean, it was just kind of talking about all... Uh, you know, all the nutrient benefits from like yeah. even the probiotic benefits and, um, you know, a lot, a lot of the um, amino acids. And, and so it it was just basically saying, you know, a lot of what you're talking about with the raw milk side is is similar to like the benefits you get from cheese. But it, it, they draw it out as like extending, I, extending life. I thought the pasteurization and modulation also degraded the protein, too. Uh, there's and some lower, there's, lower the total. There's some discussion, discussion about that, but check this out. So here, I got the stats now. Pasteurized milk has up to 66% loss of vitamin A, D, and E. Vitamin C uh, loss of about 50%. The heat affects water-soluble vitamins and can make them 38 to 80% less effective. Vitamin B6 and B12 are completely destroyed during pasteurization. It also destroys beneficial enzymes, antibodies, and hormones, and it destroys lipase, which is an enzyme that breaks down fat which means you don't absorb the vitamin A and D um, as well. And then the homogenization uh, increases the, uh, the the potential for oxidation. You also said the you also said uh, loses magnesium too, didn't you say that? Um, I didn't see that here, but yeah. yeah so, you said that too. Yeah, so. I didn't think of that too. Like the common things, B vitamins, magnesium, like 60% well, of people. Are real raw deficient. milk, I mean, if you can tolerate it, obviously a lot of people can't have milk, but a real raw milk is a superfood. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a fact. There's yeah. whole cultures that survived off of uh, milk. It's if you can have milk and it doesn't, you know, you don't have a, a, an allergy or intolerant to it. Um, you could live off of milk. Yeah. I mean, you could almost live completely off. That's, of a, milk. that's the unfortunate part is it. Milk has got a bad name or a bad rap because of what we've done to it. So do you want to know what else? If you go on forums, cause I went down the rabbit hole again and I haven't done this in a while on raw milk. There's all these forums of people who are like, Oh, dairy milk gives me acne, right? People milk does this. They switched to raw milk, acne gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't the it wasn't the milk. It was the fact that it was uh, you know pasteurized and homogenized, and it changes everything. By the way, did you know raw milk doesn't go sour? Yeah, you can have it forever. It just you, turns into like butter. It, it, yeah, it becomes yeah, buttermilk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas regular milk actually goes sour, and that's because raw milk has beneficial bacteria. Whereas 
uh, pasteurized milk has no bacteria. No bacteria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So crazy. And now here's the crazy and part. And I didn't hear you say either. It also destroys the digestive enzymes that are in there, yes, which is part so of what helps people, people think, digest. A lot of yes. people who think they can't you have lactose, there's some lactase in raw milk. Now, that, now, if you're fully lactose intolerant, you can't do it. But some people are like, oh, crap. I, I, when I have raw milk, I'm, I'm totally well, fine. Well, even like goat milk, I've heard people are able to yeah. uh, absorb and in, in, in they're non-reactive to that versus like dairy. Have you guys seen, if you guys want any evidence that there are definitely, definitely elements of our laws and governments that are just absolutely crazy. <laughs> have you ever seen, I think it's, I want to say it's the FDA. You ever seen them go in and raid a raw milk? Farm. Oh, you just like smash all the bottles and really, oh, yeah. Bro, it's like a drug. It's bust. like they're going in <laughs> to a <laughs> meth house. Ridiculous. Oh, they're armed, yeah. fully armed. Really? Yeah. Kicking. Look yes. it up. Yeah, yeah Doug. Yeah. Look up a uh, raw milk farm like raid. Gestapo. You would be <laughs> because here they, in our country. In America. Yeah. That's weird. I in our country. I mean, as I if just, we haven't done a bunch of crazy shit. Well, I mean, I, I was around that industry, right? So I, I don't, you would did think you guys sell raw milk or did you guys pasteurize? Organic. No, we were, we were organic raw, dude. Yeah. And raw? Yeah. Yeah. We wow. have both. Mm -hmm. And almonds. Uh, it was all, it, remember I told you when, so what's well, crazy. I, you know, I didn't know what organic was until I worked there. Shipping oh. raw milk across state lines has been illegal since the eighties, but the crackdown really started in the two thousands. Now what's funny about this is it says, Oh, E. coli and salmonella outbreaks. When you look at all the consumption of raw milk yeah. and look at how many people get sick from it. And then the consumption of regular milk who gets sick, it's actually far safer. Yeah, the propaganda is crazy. It's like E. coli, it's always like spinach. You know, like some somebody like didn't wash their their vegetables, yeah. and you know, and then the they handled it, and then got in your food. Yep, yep. It always, but you got to look up Doug videos of these raids because they're, they're they're ridiculous. It looks like a drug raid going on, like the, uh, the you know, whatever. What's the name of that agency that breaks down? What's unfortunate for them too is that the there's FDA? there's very no. minimal margins no. in that space too, and they. And they the regulations are so high, and they make it so difficult for someone to be really successful doing something like this. Yeah, look at this. Like they'll come oh. in, guns guns drawn. <laughs> Dude, what? Then they'll take their shit. Look at that, guns drawn. Why, bro. This like, is a farm. Why? Like, are they even armed? This and, is a farm, bro. Why are they Let pointing Rob guns at live. them? Yeah, dude. And that's, they'll, that's and, ridiculous. And it's like uh, it's like prohibition videos where they're like kicking down like you know things of alcohol and stuff. <laughs> it does. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that wild? Did you drink? Did you ever drink the milk straight? Like, did you ever pour yourself From a glass? Like like a, uh, every morning, I used to tea squirt tea it into my milk, uh, my coffee. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would literally. That's how I would get my cream. I was like delicious. straight from the tea, dude, because yeah. it's already warm and yeah. it's creamy. Yeah, right into my coffee. Oh, yeah. Man. I wish I could have dairy. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, stop! Yeah. That's, that's disgusting, Justin. What? It's, it's, it's when I, butters, so when I dude. so when I was a part of that, they were number three of the eight only organic dairies in all of California. They still exist. The, that company? That yeah. company? No, no. What they do? Husband, remember I told you the husband and wife. The wife was sleeping with the oh, my friend. Stop. And, yeah, yeah. Was, was, <laughs> leave that for an off air story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh god. <damn. laughs> That sucks. I do yeah, remember the story. Yeah, you remember the story yeah, now? A little sidebar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Side uh, no. Yeah, no, they're not. It's like a Netflix special. <laughs> yeah, it's a Netflix. <laughs> I've got a couple of those. Dark <laughs> milk. To, to the, <laughs> the dairy industry, the cannabis industry, the fitness industry. More, I'm pretty sure I could do three yeah, documentaries. More dude. like a Hallmark channel. Bro, you've seen the dark. <laughs> Come under, at me, Netflix. Yeah. You've seen the dark, the dark underbelly of like. I, I, uh, you know I would expect. Now you know why I'm so jaded. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> about everything. You know? It ruins relationships. Why are you so grumpy all the time? Why don't you trust anybody? I would expect the weed industry, you know, with the fitness. I, I was in the fitness room, so I know how shitty it could be, but yeah. I did not expect the milk industry. To yeah, dude, like it's that. just this shady gangster, all this <laughs> stuff like that. It's really, it's really sad. It's really unfortunate. That's crazy. But yeah, yeah, I was a part of that early on. I didn't know what organic was until that. Like I, I learned about or, organic yeah. food and what it, what that meant working. Were you the year. only, uh, hmm. was there anybody else milking when you were doing that? No, when I started. It was only me. So I was like the, their their first hire. I was their first like. How many cows did you have to do? A hundred and thirty something. What? By what? yourself? No, all day? You don't do it all by hand. I was going to say. You prep them and then you hook them to a machine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah by I don't hand. My just, just, <laughs> head would see cartoons. You could maybe do three in a day. <laughs> Massive forearms. I mean, so there has <laughs> yeah, been times though where you, you have to milk a, a cow like that by hand, you know, because like, let's say there's uh, like they have some sort of a disease. There's a technique issue, too, right? You, you don't, don't want to get You don't just the, squeeze it in the milk. Oh, yeah. No, like I guarantee if we all went there right now and we would all not be able to. You would not be able to get the milk out. You would be like, it's not working. Why is this not working? And then I walk over the transitional. Like what? 
topic there, Doug. The big forearms. You guys know there was actually a real guy behind uh, Popeye? No. Yeah. They based it off of like yeah. a real life person. You know, that was my favorite, one of my favorite cartoons. Oh, mine too. My grandpa actually did a really good impression of him. I have good memories. What of was the initiative on the spinach? Was that like, so, did, did spinach? No. 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 This is what, because I, I thought that was like a big, uh, you know, marketing ploy. Like, like this brilliant big spinach. <laughs> they came in and, yeah. you know, they really I got I thought it was buy. because kids lacked iron and that was the way of getting kids to have more. So he, he actually would, so he was like a sailor. He, he actually came back to the States and- I want to see the real Popeye. He would put like a pipe in the corner of his mouth and he'd tell these kids these tall stories of like his physical- like strength feats and all these things like that he did overseas. And is that him? Yeah. It looks like Yeah. Him. With uh exactly. And then and then he 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 actually based a lot of the strength feats he would tell them that it was because he ate all his spinach and like he actually like would describe what you see in the cartoons. Like that was like his his real persona. And I never, then somebody took that and like put it in onto a, a cartoon. Now form. I never understood why they made his forearm so big and the rest of him normal. Yeah, I don't know. That like in the either. cartoon, it was all four. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, because you Jack, know, Jack he, he would be a great milker. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? You know, it's funny because I never thought about that. You know, when you tell the story, what's it say? Great Depression. It was to prompt children of all ages to eat more uh, spinach. Okay, I think it was because at this point, iron deficiencies were a big deal and meat was very hard to come by. Yeah. And so they were like, we got to get kids to eat more spinach. Yeah, I'm sure. Which, by I the mean, way, is a terrible way to get iron. You I, yeah, I'm sure there was, they saw that opportunity and were like, yeah, yeah you know, let's let's push this. But uh, it, like, he actually put that in his story. So he was, it back was all like authentic. Back when cartoons sold somewhat healthy food, you had bugs, bunnies, I know. And carrots. And yeah, now we just get like Fruit Loops and like all this like just sugary Dude, cereal I, bullshit. I, so Popeye, the cartoon, because I was so into getting strong or whatever, is solely the reason why I developed a, a taste for spinach. I hated spinach when I was a kid. I thought yeah. it was bitter and gross. Yeah. Watched Popeye, dude, and then would ask, "Please make me spinach." And my whole family thought I loved spinach. I don't love spinach. Nobody I knew how to buff. cook vegetables. Yeah, yeah. In no boomer. No. I, I challenge any boomer that yeah. listens to this, like, like if they knew how to cook vegetables back yeah. in the day. No, they boil them. They didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. They or then they sure. slap or, them or all cheese. in butter. And, just put and then once on the microwave that, came out, that was, it that was ruined what my everything. Did. <laughs> that was like how we made vegetables. You would throw cheese on top of it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, the kids will like it if I just douse well, it. All this. My family's Italian. We always had good food. We well, I, okay. yeah, no, you guys know how to I do I guess that I can't really stuff. challenge yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. If you're you, Italian. You no. American I'm, kids. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We threw like fucking Velveeta, Velveeta on top disgusting. of it. Disgusting. I seriously think we did. I think we did put Velveeta. <laughs> I mean, disgusting. they make everything. They the, turn into jello. What's the plastic wrapper cheese? What's that one? What's oh, the American uh, cheese? Craft. Craft. Okay. craft yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, can I just say something right now? I have fond memories of bologna. First of all, Ooh. what the fuck is that? Ooh. It's literally a large hot dog slice. That's <laughs> what you think about, right? Yeah. Bologna and Kraft Singles cheese, mayonnaise, Wonder Bread sandwich. Ooh. It would go in my bag, right, when I go to school, and then it would be slightly melted by the time lunchtime. Oh, my God. It's disgusting. Yeah. And I, I mean, I must have developed like a, like, even right now, I'd be like, that kind of sounds, you should <laughs> eat it right now. <laughs> like, I could eat that. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It would make me, oh. yeah, You know, no. it's just a memory. No, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I kind of have that with peanut butter and jelly sandwich, like only because that was hey, the only thing I knew how to make. And like, my parents, well, you figure it out, get your own PB and J. I tell you, when I was competing and I needed to hit my calorie intake of five, that like PB and J's became like a they're good. I brought that back. They like, were that good. was something I ate a lot. Now, as a did kid. you guys do the jelly with the fruit chunks in it or just jelly? Did it all. Yeah, whatever. It it all. Even when you were a kid, yeah. Yeah. you didn't uh, mind the fruit chunks. You remember they, they, they had the one that were mixed together. They had like goobers or whatever. They had like like jelly and lazy. Yeah. How lazy do you have? Yeah, to I was like, what? Lazy. Why? Just lazy. Hey, Mix uh, that shit yourself. When you make a peanut butter and jelly, do you do the peanut butter or the jelly first? Oh, I do the peanut, peanut butter yes, first. Peanut butter. What? Yeah, yeah. Are you're you the only serious? weird one here, bro. Bro, no, you do not. You Wait, always you do reason? jelly first because the jelly wipes off on the bread, and you have no jelly on the on the knife anymore. This is you almost as not, bad as you bro, sit you guys, down on the toilet. Oh, you guys are so wrong here. <laughs> it is always jelly first. You know, you think like a, you know, you think like a girl. <laughs> you know that? I mean, it makes that, sense. That could be a compliment. It makes sense. I know. Yes, yeah, if you yeah, do yeah. peanut butter For first, you'll never sense. get peanut right. butter off it. Like and then now something... you get peanut butter in the jelly jar. If you go jelly first, oh, I just you can it. wipe oh. off on the bread and you have a... <laughs> you, you are that guy. You are that guy. Fuck it, Justin. At least I mean Never is allowed to make peanut butter jelly at my house. <laughs> no. Never is allowed to make peanut butter jelly. That's not what I would do. I always I, use two knives. Well... 
that's it. And you I was going to make you a nice meal, that's Adam. That's the bachelor guy who only has four dishes you got to do. It. <laughs> 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 you got fucking Justin licking the knife. You got <laughs> Doug wasted silverware. Hey, 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 you have no excuse. Hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Let's be real, though. I didn't make my own set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's why you were I'm, puzzled. He's got the hey, crust I asked, off I asked like guys, the triangles. Doug fired right away. You know what you did. So I was like, fuck. Uh, what, I'll just what, copy them. What would I do? What did I do? Oh, wait a minute. You know, Adam, you do make sense. This might go down to you. You know the same quality of advice as your dishwasher. It is. I, yeah. I. If you don't know that, I remember the first time someone taught me that. That was like, oh my god, why would I ever do peanut butter first? Because I always get peanut butter in the jelly jar. But if you go jelly first, you wipe it off on the yeah. bread, and jelly comes right off hey, the knife. You I think you just changed a bunch big. of people's lives. Hey, yeah, gotcha. really, yeah, and the truth, I should call my mom right now and ask her because I, <laughs> I didn't make. Yeah, yeah. Like ask your, bro. ask your mom. We I should, feel like your mom. We should do that on air, dude. And I do feel like you definitely fucking licked the knife. I definitely. Fucking readily admit it, dude. Like, and then my brother would make one after me. Yeah, I know, bro. Bro, <laughs> just like I don't know what you're talking about. Bro, I, was, butter right off. I was disgusting. I would take the milk and just jer- drink it right, right out of the, the gallon thing. all the time, and everybody that would catch me and get all pissed off. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! I'm gonna cause all kinds of fights tonight. What? It's all right. So, yeah. Everett's, you know, he's he's in the same trajectory as me. Really? You know, I have to like check him on all these things. It's hard, dude. It's payback. It's dude. hard to watch. Dude, we were watching. Um, so every night, like we we kind of uh, uh, listen to music, and and so I told you guys before he was like starting to sing and get into that, like yeah. in the shower and all that. And so, like Spotify has um, has it where you can kind of pull their lyrics up and you can kind of yeah, see yeah. along almost karaoke. And so we started to do that, um, and he he was laughing about like singers that have really low voice. We started like Johnny Cash and then I was like, oh, you should check out like Barry White oh, yeah. and you should ch- check out like Isaac. Um, I forget his name, Isaac, uh, but he did uh, Shaft, the, oh, the theme God. song. And so I'm like, oh yeah, Shaft, he's one bad mother. You know, <laughs> shut your mouth. Like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, this will be great, dude. He could, and he'll, he'll get a kick out of this. And so we started playing it. it takes, it's a really long intro, you know, and it's just like, getting in the whole yeah, funk and everything. Yeah. And then I actually sent Doug the lyrics because this just like popped up and we started to sing it. And then I saw right away and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is it? <laughs> Please, Doug. Please. Okay, I'm just reading this, okay? okay? Okay. Who's the black private dick that's a sex machine to all the chicks? <laughs> Shaft. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> Who is the man that would risk his neck for his brother man? Shaft. 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 That's great. Can you dig it? Yeah, I can dig it. <laughs> Who's the cat that won't cop out when there's danger all about? Shaft. 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 So far, so He's good. He's one bad mother. <laughs> right no, on. the opener, really. They say this cat, Shaft, is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. That's good but I'm stuff. talking about Shaft. Yeah. Then that's... we can dig it. He's so, a complicated man, yeah. but no one understands him but his woman, John Shaft. Ah, that's okay. a good, that's Beautiful, good stuff. Beautifully done. <laughs> Whenever I hear Can You Dig It, I just think of the Warriors. Remember yeah. that scene? Mm-hmm. Can you dig it? That's yeah. a great scene. Yeah. That's a great scene. I tried to show you guys the other day. Did you guys like movies like like the Warriors when you were kids? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I never watched it. There was Wait, a few. On, there's never a few seen the Warriors? Show. I have never era. seen the Warriors. I got I more into the breakdance movies. You've talked about it before, but I've never been compelled <laughs> yeah. by the spirit. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you talk about movies, Doug and I never go <laughs> Hold on a second. It. You never watched I'll, You've I'll seen the Warriors. I always put those in a category of like, yeah, I won't watch it. No, no, no. Listen, you've seen the Warriors. No, I haven't. I've never watched it. I thought you saw it when you were a kid. No. That's a movie you would like as a kid. Yeah. Not now. Now you watch it. It's cheesy. You've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. Okay. But you liked, what's that one? Yeah, I liked all the Electric or Breaking. Break in like yeah. New York or whatever. Those are good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got into the gang movies, dude, because I thought I was <laughs> I thought I was a badass. I saw yeah. the Warriors. Then I saw well, the Outsiders was the best one. That's a good movie. You guys have seen the Outsiders. Yeah, I've seen the Outsiders. I've seen parts of it. So I haven't seen. I don't think I've ever. You haven't watched. seen the full Outsiders. Yeah, I don't think I've watched any. Doug, of those. Pull up the cast of the Outsiders. No, I know everyone. You will not it, find a movie with yeah, more no, it's, superstars. It's stacked, I know. for sure. It I know is. that. You will not find yeah. a movie with more superstars than. I think it's like one of those shows that it's it's been on TV since we were kids, like so many times that I've probably caught parts of it, but I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've ever turned it on and said, "I'm gonna watch this." I literally thought like I'm gonna I'm gonna be these guys uh, as a kid. I don't know why I did. Yeah, Matt Dillon, C. Thomas Howell, Ralph Macchio, Macchio, Macchio. Uh, Doug, you break my heart every time. I'm sorry, uh, Patrick. Patrick I'm not Italian. Dude, Patrick, Patrick. Rob Lowe, Tom Cruise, Emilio Estevez. Dude, Tom Cruise is in that. I don't Bro, know that. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, dude. Wow. Yes, yeah, he's Emilio soda. Estevez? I think he's soda pop. Matt yeah. Dillon was in there. Great movie. It was such a good movie. Anyway, I watched that. And then I got. Then I watched the Warriors. Then I watched The Wanderers, which is a really cheesy gang movie. 
Yeah. But I totally got into that kind of shit. Yeah, it was a whole, it was a whole series, the whole season there where I was watching these. You know, this is before the real gang movies. You know, before like Boys in the Hood, and shit like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I had a, uh, I, I had a, a dad win. I wanted to t- share with you guys. Uh, um, remember, I told you that I, I implemented this thing with, with Max. And, uh, you know, you, you, you do these things and you always wonder like, you know, is it worth what I did? Is it going to pan out or is it going to help at all or whatever? And uh, he hadn't asked me to buy anything in, in quite some time. And I came home last night <clears throat> and he's into this thing that my mom got him for his birthday. They're like number blocks and they, it's like it, it's a game and it's basically helping him with math and mm-hmm, understanding mm-hmm. like how you can uh, you turn a nine into a cube still with three, 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 like you can do, it's like a cool way. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's like a hands-on cool math game thing. And he really is into it. Right. And it comes with like the first 10. And then I guess you can buy additional stuff like that. And he found out like after playing it with Katrina Flash days. And as soon as I walked in the door, daddy, can you buy me this? Can you buy me this? I said, Oh, you want me to buy that for you? Huh? And he goes, yeah, how many books do I need to read? I Boom. Like, ah, yeah, son. How many did you make him read? Ten. Yeah, ten's um, the book. Ten's, I mean, his books are pretty. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got to be careful because I got to read them really. Oh, right. so <laughs> yeah, how many yeah, books yeah, do you yeah, got to yeah. read? How many books have I got to read right now? <laughs> Eventually, we will we'll up the ante when he's actually doing <laughs> the work <laughs> right you know, now. My, see, this is the problem all with those daughters. Those are the pictures. All, this all is my those. problem with daughters. My daughter, my sons will say, can you buy me this? Like, uh, no, whatever. My daughter, my 14-year-old, doesn't even ask. Just send me a picture. I'll just get a picture. Mm. And I'll be like, oh, she wants that. Let me go on Amazon real quick. And Jessica checks me. She's like, why do you keep doing that shit? Like, oh, I gotta stop. <laughs> and then my youngest, my 14-month-old or whatever, I'm ruined. I'm screwed with that little one. I know it. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's going to be tough, man. I mean, is there is there a, there's somewhat of a good side to that too, right? Because I think that the whatever you do, dad wise, you kind of set the bar expectations for the man. So I mean, the the, the man that's going to she's going to be a sh- shitty. Uh, she's going to have a uh, like a boyfriend that's got to buy everything for. Yeah, that's I mean, not good either. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, he's going to hate broke, you. Dude. I'll watch him. Uh, <laughs> he he'll come you. talk to me. I'll be I'll be cool with him. So oh he come and talk God. to me. Like, uh, listen, Mister DeStefano, like I love your daughter, but. She just wants me to buy things yeah, for her all the time. I just can't keep up. Yeah. And it's just crazy. I'm working you know three I mean? jobs. Like, you know, yeah, I feel yeah. like she doesn't yeah. love me unless yeah. I buy her things. And I'll be like, yeah, that's yeah, weird. She's used to the good life. Yeah, I don't dad, know. That's kind of weird. Your dad, her yeah, dad probably, gave it to her. <laughs> be Boy, better. I a little horror, yeah, son. Yeah. You ever think about paying up another shift? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Keep your ass, kid. Yeah. Yeah. Keep talking about that. Anyway, did you know that there that there's a, a new uh-huh. male contraceptive that they might be hitting the market soon? Doug, look up a uh, male contraceptive testicle gel. Wow. <laughs> testicle gel. Yeah. They inject this gel. You should do this. Into your, wait, I'm in, going to get the actual. Wait, wait, wait inject? <laughs> what do you mean inject? Uh, that's where you use a needle and then you put. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. Was, you na- <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> they will put a Why gel. Why would you want to inject Nobody's gel in your balls? Not in your balls. In the, uh, the tube that brings the sperm, um, that brings the sperm down. So instead of cutting them. They oh. put this gel in there, and it blocks the sperm from coming through. And I guess the good thing about this is it's reversible. Whereas a vasectomy, very expensive, <clears throat> shitty process to try to reverse uh, a vasectomy. How long does the gel last? That's a good question. We should look it up. I don't even know if it's approved yet. Yeah. Um, what does that say, Doug? The gel Why? contains two hormones, synthetic progesterone, uh, which blocks natural testosterone production in the testes and reduces sperm production. The second, a replacement testosterone, Maintains. Oh, this is way worse than I, I thought. I'm not sure this I would ever want to put it, use a cream on my on myself that is messing with my hormones. Yeah, this levels. is way worse than I thought. I interpreted it as it's called vasal gel. Ugh, what a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah. Why would you put that in your on yourself? Sper- yeah. Hold on. Start with the first so picture. In, you're in that tube. It, so, so they inject blocking it, the, it. So it's basically like yeah. So vasal gel up. is injected into the lumen, the hollow interior of the vast difference uh, different difference. Vasogel gel fills the inferior interior, forming a soft, semi-permeable gel barrier that nestles. I like all the words they use. Oh, nestles. Yeah, it makes it feel comfortable. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Blocks the fuck out of your yeah. sperm is yeah. what it does. It's you know, like it's a nice, like, that's... Swiss Miss cocoa. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. Gently hugs your tongue. Yeah. Nestles into the tiny folds in the walls of the vast friends. Sperm are too big to get through the gel barrier, so the sperm end up being reabsorbed by the body. Reversal has been shown in animals, but not yet in hum- humans. To remove it, they dissolve it and flush it out with an injection of a simple solution. What the hell is that? Yeah. So hold on a second. Is vasogel hormone or not? Was that the same thing that you were reading, Doug? 
Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, Look up basil gel. So they say it's non-hormonal. So I, okay, I so this is the one I saw. Yeah, because the other thing you pull up was yeah. something else. Yeah, I was like, I definitely would put nothing on this. Gonna be my like, goddamn. So from 2013. What is this? Was this from this 2013? We're at from basil I'll gel leave it to was... Sal to bring up some new cutting edge stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Check this stuff out from 1998. Hey, you Did you guys know we landed on the moon? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> At the time, this was in research stages only. Okay. Of, so, is it so? Is it still not approved? There might be. A, there might be more updates. Did, did you see like a new article? It's a pass for me. Up on it, yeah. So yeah. So yeah. I wonder. I wonder if something. Maybe it's it's hitting the market now or something. You know. I, I, here's why I wouldn't do something like that. We don't know what the gel does, yeah. where it goes. And then why, so, okay. why not just do a vasectomy then? Because I don't, the problem well, is obviously is, yeah. is hard to reverse. Is this why you're looking at oh, this content? Because uh, yeah. you had one scheduled, right? I do. I still do. I No, to be honest with you, I wasn't looking this up. It popped up for some reason. These phones listen to us. Yeah, I swear to know. God, bro. They hear you talking Swear about. to God. I 100% believe that. It's so weird. Of words. Yeah, I don't know how many times this has happened recently now where we're having a conversation like this. And then I go to Google search it and I put the first l letter in and it has the whole sentence of what I asked. And I'm like, that can't be possible. What yeah, does that say? For sure. The side effects, of course, this is from their website, uh, are minimal. It does not have the side effects of a vasectomy and is not hormonal. <laughs> so it does not have an influence on the body's hormonal <laughs> system. The noticeable side effects could be a little bit of swelling. After and a injection. lot of unsatisfactory endings. Yeah. Oh. yeah. What's the, what's that? How do you reverse a vasectomy? We should look that up real quick. Just for me. I just mean, see what that looks like. like let's, I'm pretty sure let's you just reattach the tubes. Right now for your shit. No, <laughs> nobody <laughs> else cares, look bro. Up, I even <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm looking at this gel. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't do it personally. Yeah. Uh, may cause permanent scarring or changes to the vast deferens and whether repeat injections could be done safely. Um, yeah. And so, if it's actually working, you know? Okay. So there's some concerns about that too. So okay. good luck with that. So the, the, the vasectomy fun. reversal is like a much more of an intricate uh, surgery. That's what it is. Because oh. cutting them is not a big deal apparently. But what are the side effects of vasectomy? Isn't it? There's there's, there's some... Justin, what, what was it that prevented I, you from getting it? I just... Sad. Uh, it was... Reduced I, volume. Literally, was it? it was all psychological. I just was like, I I didn't want to show up, you know. Like <laughs> I was like on my way to do it, and I just was like, nah. And you can't work out for like a like a few days, right? Yeah. Or is it a week? I well, you know what, too, is because I've heard that the I mean the percentages where you, people actually still will get pregnant, or you know, it didn't really. Um, uh, basically it didn't like act as a contraception at that point. Like there was a lot of cases that, and having to um, do it again. I've heard stories of that. And so I was just like, I, I heard too many of my lo like close friends that have done it. What happened? Yeah. Like they, it didn't work. What do For you mean? One, they had another kid. Anyways. Oh shit. Yeah. And I was like, excuse me. Yeah. Like, no, that's you not get a I, refund. Like, I want happens? like a guarantee, yeah. you know, like slap some guarantees on there. Wow. Wow, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> there's those are the. Is it more? Is it more or less than uh, the uh, tubes getting tied? Both, I think it's both financially and also protective wise. So tubes getting tied is a surgery. Well, that's more. <clears throat> that's the thing. That's more of a, a serious surgery yeah. versus yeah. This is what do they say laparoscopic. It's like a, a, a pretty non invasive. Yeah, it's boom, boom, boom. You're yeah, out, apparently. Apparently, I, love I mean, they say that. I know they, they'll yeah. say that. You'll, you'll boom, feel boom, the effects boom, later. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell the truth. All the women will make fun of you, you know, because you'll sit there with your little ice pack and and little donut. Yeah, you know, I'll tell the pillow. truth. Well, you just have to say, envision someone kicking you in the nuts and see how that makes you feel. No, it can't be that painful. Well, I'm just saying, like that's how sensitive that area know, is. It's just the thought of that bothers. But that it's area. not the I testicle. I feel like it will it's be the, like an achy. It's the tube. The ball doesn't get touched. It's, it's the far it's, away. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the up, tube. Yeah. So they cut where, like yeah, where you're, like in the bonch area, I think. Is it? Oh, in the bonch area, the underneath, or is it the top or the oh, bottom? Boy, you better get this clear. Well, you guys are way different places. <laughs> One's in North Pole, South Pole. Where are you? I at, thought guy? they went under. I have no idea. Where are they going to go? To the I top? thought they go in. I thought they were. I thought it's somewhere in the balls and near where the. No. 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 It's below. You think the upper part of the scrotum under the penis. Okay, so, oh, it's, so in it's, between, it's, it's in between. It's in between. Right in between. Okay, so it's above the. It's above the. Yeah, but it's that's. I mean, that's right but in. That's not the ball though. It, I mean, it's not in it, but I mean, that's yeah, close no. enough. I mean, are we trying to talk me out of it? You want me to know? No, you guys know that. You should be convincing me <laughs> yeah, to get it. It's, just, it's like it's like lifting up the hood. You know. Uh, 
Okay. Anyway, we're going to switch over to... <laughs> hey, did you guys see uh, Hulk Hogan got baptized? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your best transition in a long time. <laughs> yeah, brother. He did. He did. He, did. he got yeah. baptized. Really? He did. Really? Born again. Yeah. Finally, he's a, he's a brother in Christ. Now, okay, is this uh, like pretty recent news? As yeah. Far? Okay, so yeah. I, I, I think it happened heard. like last month. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm. And it was really nice. It was really, Did you watch the video? Uh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I've, I've seen I've seen a few celebrities now kind of going in that. What direction. is going on? There's a cultural yeah, shift. Yeah, you've been saying right you've now. been saying this. So we'll give you the credit. You know, you've been saying that there's this massive culture shift, and we're seeing it. And I, you know, is it or has it just gotten so bad the other side that we the, we we cling on? Well, to that, these few no, stories? I think that's what's causing it. Uh, who was it, Andrew? Was it you that said that you had a pastor friend that said that all their every all the services are packed now? Yeah, well, the church I go to in uh, Santa Clara. I think it's Santa Clara. Yeah. Uh, he, there's a couple of different locations. There's one in East Coast and West Coast. And the pastor there, he talked a lot about how in the last couple of years, um, basically everyone, there's been a lot more people showing up than, than ever in yep. both, mm. both locations. There's a, there's a, there's a, a lot of people feeling like there's some kind of like a spiritual war going on mm -hmm. and the culture is polarizing in either direction. So in fact, I was talking to, that's who the shout out is today. Father Steve, he's a, one of the producers of the Word on Fire podcast. <clears throat> Love this guy. He's one of the nicest Best people in the world. Super cool guy. He's also jacked, which is really cool. Like when we first went in there to interview Bishop <laughs> yeah. Barron, I remember it got my attention. There's just like, something about that, about seeing like, it's a, like he's a like a buff priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, this guy's yeah. this guy's legit. But anyway, um, he's such a nice guy. He's got a great account on X. You could follow. You could you could does follow he, him. Does he post a lot? He does. Okay, he does, and he'll post uh, some. Usually, it's about um, you know like Christian stuff or Catholic stuff. But every once in a while, he'll talk about working out. Oh, he does. Huh? Yeah, yeah, he does. Let me see what his what's his what's his. Uh... He, I've seen. I follow him on Instagram. So he does like you know. He, every now and then he'll do like a post, and he's like after an arm pump or something. Yeah, yeah, see, dude. It's it's so, it's so funny to see that, right? It's <laughs> yeah. so cool. But Lift, anyway, lifting the weight of the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Father Steve. Find, you know, find him on on Instagram on, uh, on uh, Twitter or X. LMNT <laughs> is an electrolyte powder that you put in your water. It's got a right, the right amount of sodium to fuel your workouts, give you better pumps, make you feel better, especially if you're on a low-carb diet, a keto diet, or you only eat whole natural foods. You'll probably benefit from this. It also tastes amazing, and there's no artificial sweeteners. And if you go through our link, you'll get a free sample pack with any order. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Dana from North Carolina. Hi, Dana. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, I'll just get right into it. I went through menopause at the early age of 37, um, after having to get radiation in my hip and pelvis, my, my capacity for exercise ability to recover and build muscle have been impacted. Um, I was a triathlete for nine years until I was diagnosed with metastatic lung cancer. I recently underwent a hip replacement in June of last year. So my overall fitness level right now is less than ideal, um, compounded by the post-menopause stuff. I haven't been in a gym to do weight training in quite some time. I've tried some of the Peloton strength classes, but it's hard to keep up with the pace. There's a lot of hit and a lot of changing body positions uh, really quickly. So I'd love to hear some advice that you all have for um, experience with working with post-op hip replacement surgery clients and getting stronger in different ways while healing and taking into consideration the post-menopause. Dana, thank you so much for calling. You've been through a lot. Yeah. 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 I have. Yeah. What do you do? You now you work in. It looks like you work in the in the medical field. I do. I work uh, in the ICU. I'm a physical therapist. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Okay, good. So you know you have a good idea around kind of correctional exercise and whatnot. Okay, I so do. so you're young woman. <clears throat> you've been your body's been through some tremendous stress even before uh, the diagnosis. You trained as a triathlete, and uh, I've trained a few uh, triathletes, and they are. Um, I would put them near the top of athletes that tend to um, just overdo it with exercise and stress. And I mean, it's just kind of part of the, of the sport. I remember the first time I had a client who was a triathlete, the, the miles that he logged uh, for running, biking and swimming. And then he wanted to work out with me. I know it's unreal. And it was, yeah. And it, it was, it, I, I could, it was almost like a, it was a puzzle. It's like, well, what do I do? How do I add more physical stress to this person's body without completely overwhelming their ability to adapt and recover. And so what I did is I dramatically reduced all of the other stuff that he did. Um, and I trained him, and this is not an exaggeration, 
we did about 35 to 40 minutes worth of strength training a week. And now this was a long process of really trying to figure this out. Again, this was one of my first clients uh, that trains. In fact, he was in the medical field as well, ear, nose, and and throat specialist. And when we did that, when we finally hit the right amount, not only did he feel good, but his numbers just went through the roof. I mean, his speed went up, his strength went up, and it was. And I remember how in disbelief he was because he's like, God, I'm doing way less than I've ever done, uh, you know, as part of this training. And I'm getting such better results. And that just really highlighted our, especially people, I would say, in the medical field. I think there's a a, a bit of a bias, self-selection bias, uh, whether you're like yourself, physical therapist, or, you know, like I said, ear, nose, and throat specialist. You just have this ability to ignore or withstand stress. You just, I mean, it's just a kind of part of it. Like you just go through it. You train your butt off. You study your ass off. You're tired. So what? keep going, you know, and and you just kind of make it happen. But that does have some, uh, some potential ramifications you have to deal with. Someone like yourself, Dana, what we want to do, and this is true for most people, but this is especially true for someone like yourself, is we want to enable your body's ability to heal. We want to enable your body's ability to adapt. So we really, really, really have to be careful with doing the absolute minimum amount required to make that happen. And that means we're going to scale way back, probably so far back that you're even going to feel uncomfortable with how little Mm -hmm. you're doing. But what you're going to have to focus on is this. You're going to have to focus on the, the, how you feel and your performance. If those are moving in the right direction, however little you think you're doing, that's going to be the right amount. Now, as far as movement is concerned, you're a physical therapist you know better than we do on uh, how what your movement limitations are going to be. And I know when they do hip replacements, um, they're not exactly um, at all like a typical hip. There's going to be some limitations on external rotation and abduction, all that stuff. So you have to train within those parameters. Um, and you probably know when it's your hip joint versus when it's um, you know, let's say muscle stability or strength. Is that accurate? Do you know that when you're moving and you go, okay, that's my hip joint that has nothing to do with my inst- my muscles or strength? Yeah, it's it's hard. So I was so weak and I sent a video. It was a last minute thing. I didn't know if you guys wanted to look at what my walking was like before my hip replacement. It was hard for me to tell what was joint limitation versus what was pain versus what was just like, I mean, between the radiation and the yeah. um, the pain, I mean, I just had like no hip flexor, no glute strength. Hmm. I mean, it was really kind of embarrassing, especially because I work, I work with um, patients with neurological issues. Mm. So, you know, I'd be sitting there telling my patient, like, stand on your leg. Meanwhile, I'm like, I can't really stand on my leg, but like, you need to stand on yours. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it, it was, it's hard and still is kind of hard for me to tell what's, scar tissue from surgery, from radiation, what's just compensatory strategies over, you yeah. know, okay. many years now. Okay. So let's, let's start like this. Um, typically what you start with is, uh, balance and stability. Then we start to move into, um, I like isometrics. I, I was going to say then unilateral work. Like I think symmetry would be such a good program for her. Potentially. Right. Cause, yeah. cause you, but you would need to start with stability, isometrics, then you would do small movements, moving to bigger movements, then moving to more traditional movements. So what it would look like is, um, you know, balance. Then it would look like balance while uh, maybe doing some counter balance type stuff. So I'm gonna st- let's say I'm gonna stand on one leg, right? That would be balance, right? Ba- just basic. Another then a, a progression from that would be standing on one leg while moving my arm out in front of me to the or, side. Or a band is distracting McGill you. McGill plane, yeah. Yeah, or something like And then the next level would be, okay, can I push my leg into an immovable object? So I'm not moving it, but I'm abducting into this immovable object and creating tension and holding that for 15 seconds. And then the next level would be to move your leg out further to work on a different isometric contraction. So this will be the, progr- the progression, okay? Then the next uh, you know, level would be just abduction, uh, flexion, extension, and it would be kind of these single joint type of movement just to kind of connect to things. And then the next level would be, can I sit down and stand up while maintaining stability and balance? And then you can move on to, you know, different exercises. We'll send you map symmetry, but you probably are going to want to start 
before that and slowly uh, progress yourself. Now, um, we have some, I don't know if you want to call them complications, but things to consider like uh, the fact that you're, you, you've gone through menopause. Are you on hormone therapy by any chance or, or is that contraindicated because, okay, so you're on hormones then. Okay. So um, in that case, uh, I would do what I said. Are you doing any of the exercise right now? She it, tried Peloton. You, you, I ride, I ride my bike. Um, I have started doing Pilates, which is a really great way to just be anti-gravity, but yeah. still mm -hmm. do something. Cause it is hard for me to squat and lunge, um, without just looking like a complete ass hat for lack of a better word. <laughs> um, so that's been really nice to be able to strengthen, you know, doing bridging, but then after a while, you know, like you're like, well, maybe I want to do a squat, but like the bridging is okay. So those transitions are still kind of dicey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. By the way, when we, we used to manage gyms and uh, I, I, I can answer for my partners. We used to see people working out all the time. We'd see people squat four or 500 pounds. We'd see people do crazy things. Nobody was more impressive than the people that were in their challenge because of either a previous injury or because they had moving issues. So you don't look like an ass hat to anybody. If I saw you working out, uh, you'd probably inspire the hell out of me. So let's be, yeah, be a little, <laughs> be gentle to yourself. Okay. So I don't like Peloton no, for you. Not at all. I don't like any kind of, it's fine to build st like, like stamina. There's it's, nothing wrong with that. It's repetitive in the same plane while we're trying to work on mobility in the hips. And it's not building strength. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit and then that's it. And if anything, it may actually cause atrophy if you push that too hard. Mm -hmm. It's too much of a stress. I think you should do pure Pilates is okay. I don't know. How often are you doing Pilates? Um, twice a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would do the, I would go Pilates once or twice a week. And then I would like all your energy should be towards, uh, what would be considered strength training. Now that can be isometrics. That could be stability. Like I said, and that could be traditional strength <laughs> training exercises. Um, uh, but it should be focused on getting stronger before you do any other you know, form of exercise. That's what's going to move you in the right direction. I mean, I really feel like you can follow symmetry and regress some of the potential hip stuff if you need to. And I think with your background, mm -hmm. I, I think you're going to know that as you go into, because there's a lot, there's obviously a lot of upper body stuff that I think you can follow it as exactly how it's laid out. But as you get to some of these areas that where you might find yourself really challenged, you would regress back to do some of these stability moves like Sal's right. talking about. But I really think that program, like, as far as uh, the intensity, the frequency uh, of training and stuff that I'd have you doing, the type of movements, the fact that the whole it very first gradually leads you. Yeah, into the first that. phase is all isometric. So that'll be a great yeah. phase. So I think that's and and here's here's something. Okay, what you might notice or what might be good for you is you might find when you get into some of the the leg stuff that you might extend the isometric portion of the program longer. Yeah. So in other words, as you follow the program, the isometric lower body body portion is what you continue to do as yeah. you progress through the rest of the program with your upper body. Yeah, because you're going to find you could probably start doing you know chest, shoulder stuff and move sure. to phase two, no problem. But you might be hindered a little bit still in the lower body. And so just extend the the phase of isometrics in there until you feel confident okay i can move to the next phase i might even extend the program itself in terms of like the first three phases not even entertain the fourth phase for oh, yeah. quite a while so this would be like uh run it multiple times in a row without doing the fourth phase yeah no that's that's great advice but that's good structure though like yeah, as far as uh, i mean I, I, I if you were a client of mine we'd be doing a lot of isometric stability stuff we would definitely uh de not be doing bilateral the frequency that it's laid out would look like that. The only thing different is I wouldn't pu I wouldn't do the the final phase, but it's really and then I you'd be doing a lot of unilateral stuff. I would want, especially when we're doing lower body stuff. I, you've probably heard us talk about this. Mirror the 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 weaker side, right? So always start with the most challenging side for you, and if that only gets two or three reps, you know, then you're only doing two or three reps on the other side or whatever you can do on the weak side mirror that with a dominant side that's the lead that's the side that leads yeah. uh the rest of the body F fatigues your enemy in this right so you want to make sure every rep itself is very you, you're fully recovered uh you have full like attention and focus for each one of those reps as we're re-patterning and we're we're re-establishing this this solid strong connection yeah in other words dana stop the set when your form moves away from perfect yeah. not when you can't do any more reps or when you feel super tired so it's like I'm perfect form, perfect form, perfect form. I'm off. That's it. I'm going to stop the set there, rest and repeat. 
Um, if you do, if you move outside of perfect technique, that becomes the pattern that you start to then develop and train. And you will progress that way still. Okay. Yeah. The, here's the other thing too. Training your, the rest of your body, there, there is a, of course, most of the strength building effects from strength training are localized to the area that you're training, but there also is a systemic effect. I don't know if you're familiar with the research on, yeah, there was, there was a couple studies. One of them was amazing where they had, uh, they immobilized somebody's arm. So like to simulate a cast and they had half the people strengthen the other arm and then the other half of the people did nothing. And the people that worked on the arm that was not immobilized reduced the amount of weak uh, of strength loss and muscle loss in the arm that was mobilized. So in other words, like, you know, some people are like, oh, I can't really work out my whole body. So I'm just not going to work out at all. That's not true. Training your upper body, training your other leg, whatever, that will also, there's a systemic kind of effect that happens as well. It's not just localized. Dan, I, we have, uh, Doug's going to send over a map symmetry to you. I'm also going to have him put you in our forum too. That way, as you're, go as you're going through the program, the process, if there's anything that you are challenged with, you have a question with, or if you even want to video doing some of the movements and share with us in there, uh, one of us or Dr. Brink, who's in there, who's a movement specialist, who's brilliant, um, will help help guide you through yeah. that process. How's how's how is diet for you? Are you um, are you aiming for like a high protein diet? Are you trying to hit your target body weight and protein all that? I um I appreciated your most recent uh like call it a program. Like you can t you can tell the the age group that I hang out with. People call them shows, but I still call them programs. <laughs> um, the uh, the talk about protein and how really it's really hard to hit protein yeah. like. Yeah. If you're doing like I'm trying to hit um, uh, 115, and that's hard. I mean, mm -hmm. if I get to 70, I'm like, this is really hard. And then I finally got to 115 for the first time two days ago, and I was like, oh, this is. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of planning, so I I am trying. It's good. It's tricky. D Dana, I want to. I'm going to hammer this home. Okay, look at the data on um, branched chain amino acid supplementation, glutamine supplementation. Um, leucine supplementation and then protein intake on uh, recovery from injury or burns, like three, third degree burns or bed rest. The data is amazing. And what, what they'll show is like, oh my, okay, we took all these people who were in the hospital for surgery or injury or skin burn, and then we gave them branched chain amino acids or we gave them glutamine or we gave them some other amino acid. And the recovery was like, 20 to 30% faster in some of these studies. And then there's studies on protein intake. Now, the reason why the amino acid studies show what they show is because, I mean, that's like getting more protein. Okay. So if, as you're going through this process, hitting those protein targets, forget the whole, like it makes me leaner and I build more, it will accelerate your body's ability to recover tremendously. This is not a nominal, this is not like a small effect. This is a very big effect. So really prioritize it. And 115 grams, you know, I would say start your day off with like 40 grams of protein, and then you're you're like you're you're a big chunk of the way there. If you don't start your day off with like a 40 to 50 gram protein uh, meal, it's as you know, it'll be hard to catch up uh, the rest of the day. And of course, try and do it from whole natural foods, but use shakes if you have to. Okay. All right. All right, Dana. Thank you so much for calling in. We'll see you in the so forum. Much. And I, I do want to tell you guys that um, since listening to your podcast and going through like my own exercise limitations, you've really um, inspired me to explore starting an adaptive gym for patients with yeah. spinal cord and oh, near nice. care partners. Because I think that that's, I mean, we know how important it is for us to exercise, right? And then you have patients and their care partners who are they're just physically not able to do it in the same way. And no one wants to go to a gym space if they, that's if they did exercise before their injury. That so. was awesome. my, that was my yeah. dream back in the day, Dana. That's exactly what I was trying to do back in the day. Are you attending our train the trainer? Um, it's happening live. Uh, in fact, tonight's day three. Have you watched any of it? Because you, I think you'd love it. I think it'd be, yeah, you should definitely. Let's send her a link to, uh, to some of those and then, yeah. So. Mindpumptrainer.com, mm -hmm. right? Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, mindpumptrainer.com. By the way, when this airs, that's going to be passed. But yeah, that's for, okay. But, but she, sure, sure, if she, she can do it. If yeah. she registers right now, she'll get it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. just saying for the audience in general. Yeah, because oh, this, yeah, this yeah. airs. This airs much yeah. later. The audience is screwed, but you're okay. You're good. Danny. <laughs> so go I don't to, care. I don't care about yeah. everybody else right yeah. now. So <laughs> right now, yeah, we're focused on you. Go to mindpumptrainer.com and submit your email, and then you'll get the recordings from Monday and Tuesday. But it's literally we're helping health, and you don't have to be a trainer already if it's something that you are aspiring to do. We're speaking to everybody as far as yeah, like especially if you want to business. open your own business, you'll love it. Yep. yep. Oh, great. Awesome. Right. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, right, Dana. Take care. Ah, uh, so you know, sometimes I just want to hug someone through the I camera. Know, right? Oh my God, she's been through a lot. Yeah, Holy, yeah, she's thirty-seven. She's yeah. been through Ugh, so much. It's brutal. And then you know, uh, you know, side note: to have a physical therapist ask us what they should do for exercise is. Uh, that's humbling, honor, yeah. super humbling. Yeah. The best correctional exercise people I've ever worked with in my entire life. Um, well, physical therapist. That's I, I, I always credit the one I worked with. So you know, what's interesting awesome. is that uh, obviously she has a, a very special condition of everything that she's been through. But the advice is very similar to what we yes. would tell anybody that That's is right. extremely mm -hmm. deconditioned yeah. or rehabbing anything else. It's like, and and what will probably be the most challenging thing for her is the the challenge of. Uh, she's a triathlete, right? Well, so she's, she, a, she's a triathlete, physical therapist. She's a killer. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so for her to know, like, I'm going too far, that's going to be hard. Yeah. yeah. And in doing things like isometrics can be torturous for somebody like this just because, and she's going to be tempted to want to do more yeah. or to rest less. And, yeah. and Everything's so, revolved around movement and isometrics. You're not moving. Yes. So this is a totally different uh, mindset you got to bring in. But if she stays the course, we have her in the form, so hopefully we can we can uh, keep, her, keep her focused on, on on the big picture and uh can't wait to see her. And then we didn't yeah. focus on the menopause but you know when you're when you when your body's building muscle and it wants to and the in the uh, conditions are right your body has to organize its hormones in a way to do so and the hormonal profile that is muscle building is the hormone profile everybody's looking for balanced youthful etc. Our next caller is Katie from Washington. Hi Katie. How can we help you? Hi. How are you guys? Good. 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 Yeah, good. How going? can we help you? What's going on? Yeah, so um, I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, so growing up, I was always a big athlete. I played uh, sports all through high school. Um, in college, I went on to do a few marathons. Um, and then in my late 20s, early 30s, I did a few bodybuilding competitions. Um, and then in my mid 30s, I had uh, two boys. Um, and after the first one, my body bounced back right away. After the second one, though, it did not bounce back the way I wanted it to. Um, the weight was just kind of hanging on. Um, my sleep was horrible. I just couldn't sleep through the night anymore. Um, and I just had an overall kind of feeling of I couldn't get back in shape. So um, a friend had recommended I go see this performance health coach who uh, did a full blood panel and he suggested that I do um, testosterone. Um, he said that my testosterone levels were very low. And so he recommended that, um, he put me on 10 units, which I guess is a very small dose. Um, so I started taking the testosterone after like two to three weeks, I started feeling really good. My energy in the gym was great. I was recovering from my workouts a lot faster. The weight was coming off. I was sleeping a lot better. Um, so everything was going good. <laughs> and then like week three to four, um, my libido hit and it was very, very intense, very strong. It was great. <laughs> my husband was happy about it. Um, but then it almost like got too much, uh, where he was like, you know, all right, you need to pump the brakes. <laughs> and, you know, like, uh, I mean, everything was turning me on, like, you know, uh, as you guys know, with testosterone, you know, there's part of your anatomy that can get larger. And so, you know, just, wearing tight yoga pants was, you know, I felt like masturbating. Like I was just like, okay, <laughs> so this is you know, a little, a little too much. So I decided to go back down to, um, eight units. And after doing that, uh, my sleep got horrible and I just kind of felt not as great as I had been on the 10 units. I was moodier. Um, and so I decided to go back on the 10 units, but um, that kind of just brings me to my question of, um, you know, how much of the results that I was seeing are a direct impact from the testosterone 
uh, versus like a little bit of a chicken in the egg. Like maybe I was feeling so great because I was getting better sleep. Um, maybe my mood was better because I was sleeping better and just giving me more energy, which is helping with my workout recovery, um, versus, you know, it's a direct impact of the testosterone. Great, great. And then the other question I had was, um, is it too much? Is the fact that, you know, I'm seeing a larger, I don't know if I can say it on there, but like a larger clit and I'm getting like, you know, intense orgasms and the sex is good. Is that a sign that it's too much and I should be on a lower dose? Or is it safe that it's like, you know, just enjoy the ride? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is a really literally, good, yeah, really, really good question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So here's, here's the, here's the negative with uh, hormone therapy. So I'll use an analogy. Okay. It's like, you see smoke, you're in the forest. Oh my God, there's tons of smoke. So you end up buying a really, really good air filter to get rid of the smoke. But what ends up happening is you miss that there's a fire. There's a fire that's causing all the smoke. Now you can breathe now. You got the air is clean, but the 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 what was causing the smoke, you know, we're not really solving. And eventually that fire will get so hot and burn everything out. So here's the 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 potential negatives with hormone therapy. When hormones are off, it's typically because of something else. Now, you had a kid second time around. I know what that's, you know, that's a lot. That's very, I have four kids. So although I didn't have the children, I could see what it does to a mom. Your body becomes hypervigilant. Uh, every noise wakes you up. This is an evolutionary thing. Obviously, sleep is off. Now you gotta, you're got you caring for another person. Taking care of two kids versus one is not double the work. It's like 10 times the work. People who have more than one kid know what I'm talking about. And so what happens is your hormones get affected as a result of this lack of sleep, all these things, your hormones get affected. Testosterone goes down, libido disappears exactly because your body's like, no more kids, please. We can barely handle what we have here uh, at the moment. We got to, we got to make sure you feel safe and secure. So then you take testosterone and the other stuff doesn't necessarily get fixed, but the testosterone itself is so powerful that it can make you feel amazing. It can make you feel good. It can give you lots of energy and all that kind of stuff. So is what you're taking too much? That would be more of a question for your doctor. However, from my understanding, if the symptoms of hormone replacement therapy start to get in the way of what would, what you would consider to be a good life, then I would say it is too much. Can too much of a libido be a bad thing? Well, well, yeah. I mean, if it starts to cause issues with your partner, if you start to not be able to think about other things or whatever, then it may be too much. So I think that there, we, we want to identify the lifestyle factors that were contributing to the lower testosterone because ideally, look, and we work with a hormone therapy uh, company and they're, they're exceptional, but we're always going to say, if you can get your hormones to be in great range without having to take supp supplemental hormones, that's ideal. The, the hormones are really a great place when you know, I'm on testosterone and, and I was doing everything uh, that I could to get my testosterone levels up. And, and my testosterone was in the floor. And this probably had to do with, uh, you know, steroid abuse that I did in my in my 20s. So taking testosterone was really more of a necessity than anything. So that's really the conversation you want to have with yourself. And knowing your background and, and what happened, you probably were just overstressed. Your body was just probably taking on way, way, way uh, too much. Now, the way you would work with this is you would work with your doctor. I would work with a functional medicine practitioner who who really is trying to work with natural systems in the body. And then what the doctor would probably do is slowly scale you down while simultaneously working on lifestyle factors to get your body back into balance. And then eventually, ideally, ideally, Katie, you'd want to be off testosterone and have your body just naturally have the hormone levels um, that you're looking for, but it's really like, it, it's not like, it, it's not unlike taking caffeine because my sleep is bad. It's like, I got bad sleep, but I'm taking caffeine. So now I have energy. So it's, you know, okay, I got more energy, so that's better than nothing, but it's the sleep that was the issue. So we got to look at the lifestyle and see what was going on. And it probably includes mindfulness, your, you know, the other activities in your life, sleep and what we can do around that. <clears throat> It, and, and, and I'm not saying testosterone is a bad thing. It may be that the way your lifestyle is organized to where it's like, look, I, I got all this stuff going on. I, I, right, I've done everything I can to reduce my stress, but there are just some things right now that 
I, that I have to deal with and the extra testosterone is giving me the energy to handle these for this season mm -hmm. and then I'll tackle that later on. So this is really, you know, it's going to be like where you're at. But I would suggest working with a functional medicine practitioner alongside this sports medicine um, individual and kind of find some consensus between them. How, how long has this been going on? Like, as far as like, how long have you been taking the testosterone for? Eight weeks. Okay. Okay. By the way, the, the clitoral enlargement that you're experiencing right now is not actual clitoral tissue at eight weeks. That takes much longer to happen. What, blood, yeah. It? What you're noticing is what would the equivalent of an erection. And so you have more blood flow there. So that's what it's going to feel like. Um, the actual tissue. Well, and it feels like that because it's like it won't calm, yep. calm down until I'm taken care of. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So the the actual tissue enlargement, that can take uh, years and years. And you're at a dose where, I mean, you might get some enlargement, but that would happen, you know, years from now. Um, it wouldn't happen now. Like you would have to take like serious doses of testosterone. Yeah, it's just blood. To see blood actual yeah there. tissue growth. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily... Um, worry about that. But again, that would be, again, another question for your doctor, but that's what's happening. You know, I had, I've had these conversations with the people that we work with. Everything you're highlighting though, as far as the, they're not bad side effects. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, obviously if it no. causes, causes, like, yeah, issues at home with mm -hmm. the husband and stuff like that, that's a, to Sal's point can be not ideal, but every, the things that you're, this is, if someone goes on, I, mean, I was just going to give him testosterone. Well, so I, mean, <laughs> I, I actually was going to ask, well, yeah. I, I don't know how old he is and I don't know if he's had his blood work done, but I mean, uh, I would at least, I would at least explore that. I, think I would at least explore. Cause imagine that, imagine if, uh, I, we have no idea. I have no idea what his <laughs> kids are like, mom, can you make me dinner? <laughs> we're mom, busy. are you guys taking me? No, we're busy. We'll be back later. <laughs> um, but we put on movies well, quite a few times like you go watch a show real quick <laughs> <laughs> so i you know i i don't i don't know enough about him to know like because maybe if maybe if he was matching you more maybe there would be no issue here maybe you only feel like it's a major issue because you feel so extreme from where you came from and now he's not able to keep up with that level and so i, I mean i would at least explore the idea of having him do his yeah. blood work too look the thing about testosterone katie um is it's a relatively safe hormone, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one that I think gets a bad rap for sure. It gets put in this category where it's like, whatever, but testosterone is not innocuous. So it does have behavioral effects. Okay. Not just libido. It can also affect, and it's, and it's in the female brain in particular is very sensitive to testosterone. So it's not just libido. It can actually start to move your empathy, your dopamine, your drive, aggression, motivation, um, your ability to read people's emotions in a more male direction. Now, because it's a dopamine, I mean, I would put it in the dopamine category of hormones, uh, unlike estrogen or progesterone, it may make you feel like really powerful, but there's a lot of value in the female brain. And so they've done studies on this. They'll give women testosterone and they actually lose empathy. They actually start to lose their ability. So you know how guys are clueless, like they'll walk into a room, you'll go somewhere with your husband and you'll be like, could you, did you see what she was, could you see the, did you read the room or do you see what, what's, in, what's her name said? And he'll be like, huh? I don't know. It's because we're literally clueless because our brains don't pick up on the same shit that yours does. So it's not an innocuous hormone. So pay attention to all those things. It's not like, oh, nothing's going to happen. I'm just horny. Um, it can de definitely change personality and stuff, just like birth control does. They find this now in studies with birth control as well. So I really think a functional medicine practitioner would benefit you tremendously. In fact, uh, Dr. Cabral's team is some of the best that you could work with. I, uh, maybe Doug can grab that link for me, Doug. And Let's I go to the forum. It. Go to the free forum. MP, uh, MP Holistic Health yeah. on Facebook is a private forum. We have functional medicine practitioners in there, and then they'll work with you on uh, on some of the stuff from a natural perspective. And they'll work with the fact that you're on hormones because uh, that's what I do. I work with them as well. And then you'll find a nice consensus um, in terms of you know where you need to go, where, what you need to, to do. Yeah, so, okay. Well, that's good to know. It's not just... Because I did feel like my mood was overall improved, you know, once I started taking the testosterone. But again, I didn't know, well, maybe it's because I'm sleeping better. Maybe it's because I'm losing weight. 
you know, who knows? Of if it's well, directors it's all those factors. It, it is all those factors. Yeah. And they and the testosterone does help yeah. all those things. Yep. Testosterone will make you sleep better, will give you more energy, will have you recover and build more. So it's like this. You just yep. don't want to lose sight of being able to, you know, work your way towards doing it naturally. I think to his earlier point, like, you know, right now it's kind of helping you through the eye of the storm and you're now like realizing I can feel better. And so, you know, to be able to kind of work your way into like the lifestyle habits and adjusting things now that you feel good, it, you know, would be a, a lot better strategy. Totally. So, well, I mean, does my body recognize that, wow, I feel better, I'm functioning better and it'll start creating more testosterone no. or no, no your body actually stopped. We'll stop. We'll create less yep. because there, yeah, because yeah, place of it. When it comes to hormones, it's what's called a negative feedback loop. So if you take a hormone, your body senses that hormone and then reduces or eliminates its production. So if a man takes testosterone, sperm count go down, testosterone goes down. Um, and most hormones, not all, but most of them work this way. So, uh, but like I said, that's why I think a functional med medicine practitioner will be perfect because what they'll probably do is work alongside with the doctor you're working with and they'll come up with a scale down kind right. of approach and identify other things. I mean, how, wouldn't it be amazing, Katie, if the functional medicine practitioner was like, oh, here's what's going on. Let's fix this. And then you'll be back to your old self and you'll feel normal. You won't have to take anything anymore. I mean, that would be amazing. Sex is so good though. Oh, <laughs> I mean, if you're enjoying yourself, you know, party on. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> notice I've been quiet over here. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I don't know if I all the way agree with Sal over here. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, that did, this didn't happen to my he's, wife. He's, he's right though. He really, he is right. Look, imagine and the world where only men were in it. Okay. It, it would be crazy. It, just like if it was just only women, we need that balance and it does change. Okay, look up the, look up the literature. It will change over time, the stru literal structure of your brain. So it can take a female brain and make it more male. That's and what right. the, the and, most it and it feels good. Here's why it feels good. Because men are clueless and we're driven and we're horny and we don't feel a lot of shit, which is great. But do you really not want to feel things? Like imagine, I mean, you know. Honestly, the most important part of this entire conversation is the relationship with you and your husband. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, because everything else is positive that you're saying, right? Yep. Even though the, the clip thing yep. feels weird and all the, the, all that stuff that that's all positive stuff. Nothing's negative about that. The only thing that in this conversation that matters the most to me is that, is it disrupting my relationship with my husband so much that yeah. it's causing tension? It's or causing resentment. fights yeah. or resentment or that's most important. And absolutely the hormones can affect a lot of those things. So, Either one, yeah. either one, you you have to become more aware of that, and then learn to go. Oh, am I not being empathetic? And normally, I would be right here. Um, and and you check yourself in that situation, um, or go the route that Sal is saying, which is you know maybe we go address this naturally and see if we can do this before we decide to just take this hormone. But everything you're feeling is all positive yeah. stuff. But yeah, again, the if you were my client and we were having this conversation while we're working out and, and you're like, what should I do, Adam? The things I would be asking you is more about your relationship, your totally, marriage. Yeah, totally. And I if totally you were agree. telling me uh, that that it's causing issues and we're and we're struggling because of this, I would be concerned and I would be really pushing Sal's way. If you're just like, oh, my husband razzes me, gives me a hard time because I always want him or whatever like that. But oh, things have been great. We're we're happy. Everything. If everything's happy and your guys are doing great and it's not affecting your marriage, then I'd be like, oh, this is a lot of good yeah. stuff. So, um, that yeah, I mean, he's he's very happy with it. When I went down on the lower dose, he was like. Don't go lower, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's changed. It's changed how we relate in the sense of like I have a lot of more compassion for guys because you know all of a sudden I'm sitting in bed like okay, I'm, I know I'm wearing him out, but how can I maybe like you know rub his back to get him in the oh, mood? Oh, God. <laughs> like, uh, oh my god! So I empathize with you guys. That, yeah. You know, now yeah. you're now I'm on the. Uh, the other yeah. side. Offense all the time. Go get a tool belt, sir. You know, <laughs> well, go go get house. go get in the forum. Go get in the forum that Sal yeah. suggested. It's free, okay, and and you can poke around, ask some good questions from them, and then maybe do a consultation and at least get yeah. some opinion that direction. Totally. But uh, all all is every good. now and then candles and chocolate too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. She's gonna start romancing. Right. A back massage. <laughs> yeah. Thank, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Katie. All right, Katie. Yeah. Thank you guys. Bye bye. <laughs> Never thought I'd hear. 
someone on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm all, talk about I'm all, I'm all, I'm all upside hot. down world here. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, look, and, and obviously if she's taking a dose, that's going to bring her to the upper limit of what's normal, but everybody's a, a little bit different. And look, we all know this. Like, you know, when we were 14, 15 years old, you guys remember what that was like? Yeah. Would you want to be like that again no, all the hell, time? No, hell no. Yeah. No, I mean, I, we wouldn't be able to work. It's distracting and your mind goes. So That's the most important thing right here. It yeah. really it's, is. It's, she's eight weeks in. You know, That's what it is. Like it, it starts you know, to balance so out. New. That's why yeah, I asked yeah. that. I it takes how long, how long you've been doing this for, too? Because, you know, give her another month. That's why. It, so it may get tiresome. I mean, when I went on yeah. TRT, I was yeah. like that for about three months. And then it kind of balanced so out. So all of your advice is right and I think good. If she was my client, I would probably, and if she told me like, Oh, my husband and I are great. We're not fighting yeah. over this and that. I'd probably be like, uh, let's see what another month looks like and see yeah. if it kind of levels out, calms down, and you're a little more balanced. Right now, just stock up on Gatorade. Yeah. You know? yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> Our next caller is Crystal from Virginia. Crystal, how you doing? Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. Good. How can we help hey. you? Okay. First, I'll do my thank yous very quickly, and I have my notes down here, so I'll keep looking down. I'd like to thank you for making it appear that my husband has the best time doing yard work. He tends to listen to y'all while he's out there, and it's very entertaining to look out the window and see him smiling and laughing while he's mowing the grass or poop scooping. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. All That's right. Great. Also, thank you for your affiliation with Zbiotics. We go on a lot of cruises, and because of Zbiotics, we can definitely get through our drink packages and still get up every morning and hit the gym. <laughs> oh, so that's good funny. stuff. Yeah. Winning. So now for my question. I was told to stick with my original email. So my question is, what the hell am I supposed to eat? Here's some context and some background. In episode 2246, y'all were answering a listener's question and it included the usual advice to hit your protein goal and how hard that can be for some people. Adam then said, it might be easy if you're 110 pounds. And Sal said something like, find me a 110 pound female who can eat 110 grams of protein per day consistently from whole natural foods. So here I am. I'm your girl. I'm actually about 113 pounds, but I have no problem over consuming protein. This is my second week of cutting back on protein and I'm at 130 to 140 grams per day. I'm trying to cut back to solve some digestive issues that started back in July. I was dealing with bloating that would increase my waist size up to three inches and my stool consistency had changed. I couldn't pinpoint it to a single food trigger. By October, I was extremely frustrated and thought maybe it was SIBO caused by some bad sushi I had back in July. I'm pretty impatient, so I went ahead and started Cabral's CBO protocol. I'm a couple of weeks from finishing the protocol, and there hasn't been huge improvements in my symptoms, but it did get me to better analyze what I was eating. I've been tracking for years, so I went back through my data and noticed my fiber had creeped up to close to 100 grams. A couple of weeks ago, I decided to cut back on the amount of fruits and vegetables I was eating. This was a struggle because I really enjoy eating a large volume of food. I filled that void with meat snacks. Instead of snacking on a three pound bag of fruit, I would cook extra ground beef, turkey and chicken and snack on that throughout the week. All my meals were weighed out, but I wasn't correctly counting my meat snacks. During a recent food prep, I recalculated everything and my calories were actually closer to 2,200 instead of 1,800. And my protein was around 200 grams instead of 150 grams. I'm trying to get my protein down to see if that solves my digestive issues, but I need something to fill the void. So as a 113 pound female that does not get satiated from protein or fiber and is trying to solve digestive issues, what the hell am I supposed to eat? Okay, I got some good news and bad news for you. <laughs> First of all, I could tell you've got, you're really fit. You got great delts. So everybody watching right now, when you eat high protein, that's what happens. So yeah, you're doing pretty <laughs> damn result. good. Yeah. You're doing pretty good. Okay, I got some good news and bad for you, new, news for you. The good news is, I think I know what the problem is. The bad news is, I don't know if you like the answer. So you have not done any gut testing, right? You just yeah, jumped on the CBO exactly protocol? exactly where I was going. I just went straight to the protocol. Yeah, okay, we got to test this out. You, you probably have a parasite. So all of your symptoms point to, uh, and by the way, don't freak out. It's it's way more common than people think. But some of the symptoms of parasite infection include insatiability. Like I just keep eating and I'm just hungry. I can't figure out what's going on. And then digestive issues are there as well. So Dr. Cabral can do a very easy parasite test with you. Once you test, if it comes back positive, 
The treatment is easy. It's very simple. And then you got no more parasites and you'll go right back to normal. Because I'm assuming your diet didn't change. It's just all of a sudden your digestion went off. Is that is that the case? The diet didn't change of like what I was eating. The amounts kind of creeped up and got out of control, but like no, nothing changed or was introduced. It was just like suddenly like, Did you oh have my digestive God. issues though before? No, I mean, I would, if I were to overeat or like eat off, you know, eat like an asshole, as Adam would say, then yes, I would get bloated. <laughs> but if I didn't eat like an asshole, then it, things would be fine. Crystal, do you eat a lot okay. of, do you eat a lot of raw sushi, raw fish? No. Okay. Did you, cause you said in your thing here, you thought it might've been some bad sushi. Yeah, I actually just started eating sushi and discovered it like, I don't know, like a year or two ago and I had been missing out. But um, yeah, it was, it was kind of an, in line with the sushi incident. Yeah. The most common in the modern world, so people that live in modern developed societies, the most common um, cause of parasitic infections is sushi because it is uncooked. It is raw. So if people, you know, people watching, if you eat a lot of sushi, you're, the odds of you having a parasite are actually relatively high. It's actually not that low. Um, now, the, the, again, the good news is the parasitic parasite cleanse or treatment, uh, if that once they identify what it is, is not that big of a deal. But there is a protocol though, because here's what happens: because people will go, they'll go online, buy some parasite, you know, cleanse thing or whatever, and then they feel better, but then the symptoms come back because there are things that kill the parasites, and then there are things that kill the eggs that the parasites, uh, you know, produce and they're different. So you'll kill the parasites, feel better a month later. Uh Oh, now everything's back. What the hell's going on? So I would 100% do a gut, a, a gut test, which includes a stool test and they will be able to identify, uh, relatively easily if you have parasites and if you do, you just treat them and you're good. But all of your symptoms that you're saying, and I'm guessing, okay. Point to that. But like, it's like red light, like, oh, can't eat enough, can't eat enough protein, sudden bowel changes and big time bloating. And then I saw your comment about the sushi and I was like, oh, this, there's a parasite. So go get tested. That's, that's the best advice I can give you because I don't think there's anything wrong with your protein intake. I don't think there's anything wrong with your fiber. I mean, you felt good before you might've started eating a little bit more. But the sudden, like, crazy symptoms that you're, I mean, a three inch increase in your waist from bloating is not a result of I ate 200 more calories on no, this meal. No. Well, yeah. Okay. So if it's not parasite, then it would be more, I mean, is there an intolerance that might be underlining as well? So here's what happens with parasites the parasites can affect digestion, which then can cause SIBO, which can also cause gut it's inflammation, which can cause intolerances. So if you got tested, it's unlikely that you had a parasite and you didn't have SIBO, or it's unlikely that you had a parasite and you didn't have food intolerances. The parasite can cause uh, all of those different things. So, or you could have a fungal infection as a result of parasite called SIFO, uh, which is uh, like SIBO, but it's not bacteria, it's fungal. But it's it, seriously, I'm telling you, it's not a big deal, Crystal. If you go to Dr. Cabral's team, ask them for yeah, a gut test. They'll solve this. They'll sure. give, yeah, you'll take the test. You'll get the results in, in less than a month. You'll look at it and they'll, it'll tell you, this is what's going on. And then you'll treat it. No problem. Okay. We'll already be, um, being on the CBO protocol, interfere with the test. I would ask them, know. I would ask them about that. Probably would interfere with if you have SIBO, but not the parasite because it wouldn't touch the parasite. Okay. If that were so the in, case. in general, like back to normal, like I, can I just go after all this, go back to eating? Like it's not bad for 200 grams you of protein at to. my weight. Probably what they'll probably have you do is they'll probably scale. It back. Yeah. They'll scale you in because once the parasite, let's say that's the case. Okay. Or SIBO even, or whatever. Once you solve the issue, there's some, it's like there was a, there was a, um, an injury. Okay. So there's some inflammation. And then what you have to do is slowly work your way into allowing that injury to heal, that inflammation to heal, and then jump back into your normal diet. That's typically what it looks like. Um, but you know, each case is a little bit different, but it would, I don't think it'd be anything radical. Like, okay, we got the parasite. Now you can only eat almonds and the, you know, I don't think it'll be like that. I think it'll be more like, okay, let's avoid gluten and let's avoid dairy for a little bit, you know, while, you know, while we get your gut to heal. Okay. Okay. Now I, I want to hear back from you. I'm really, really interested to see if this is exactly the case. So okay. yeah, let us know, let us know. Maybe we'll have you come back on and do a little bit uh, and do a, like a recap on, on what the deal was. Okay. We can do that. 
All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like she didn't like that answer. <laughs> I don't know. I would like it. It's yeah, a, I think a, so. A, you know what? Hearing the word resolve, I, hearing can, the word parasite freaks people out. Well, yeah, I but, mean, there, it's, but it's it's a natural thing. Probably uh, ten to twenty percent of people in developed countries have a parasite. People in undeveloped countries, it's like a majority. Oh yeah, but like a good chunk. And if you eat sushi on a regular well, especially basis, especially fish, yeah, you eat sushi on a regular basis, your odds skyrocket. With uh, when it comes to parasites, so our next caller is Rawan from Kuwait. Rawan, how's it going? Oh, hello, how can we help you? Hi guys, how are you doing? So good to see you. I'm from Kuwait, but I'm uh, I'm based in Kuwait, but I'm Syrian, so I have to make this uh, different, <laughs> different okay. connection. No, no problem. Uh, guys, to say that you changed my life is an understatement. I swear to God, I pray for you as a thank you for everything that you do. You are the real educators the real influencers so i thank you forever and always because i spread your knowledge to people around me so i think you have good karma for the next lives oh, <laughs> thank you so much that. That. I, that was really nice. that's why things are going so well thank you <laughs> <laughs> i had all green lights today on the way home <laughs> i'll get to my question i'll try to make it short because i sent an essay i think <laughs> so in in 2020, I started intermittent fasting. I started with the 12 hour window to 14, then progressed to 18 and went crazy. The first six months were phenomenal. I saw results like never before. I saw muscle definition. I was very sharp. I was, uh, I, I think I had the best shape and the best brain during that phase. I thought that I found the secret to life. And I was an ambassador for intermittent fasting because it gave me a, a whole new perspective on health and whatever. But on the one year mark, things started to derail drastically. I started to gain body fat. I started to get slow. I was depressed, honestly. And I tried to do some blood, blood tests. I did some TSH, uh, prolactin, uh, vitamin D, everything was fine. But Honestly, at that phase, I started to do the 18 hour window, then 20 hour window. And I, I, I think I developed the binge uh, restrict uh, system yeah. that we tend to do, which was very toxic. And I was craving stuff. I ate, I, I, oh, I, I overcompensated when uh, during my uh, eating window. So it went crazy, but still I didn't break from the uh, intermittent fasting lifestyle because I like to be disciplined. When I start something, I want to go to the end. So now four years in, I'm trying to loosen up. I try to do what I like to call intuitive fasting. So my intention is to fast for 12 hours, but uh, if I find myself starving, I would break the fasting window and I would eat just trying to trick my body into it again, because it, it's not working as it did in the first place. What I'm scared of is if I damaged my metabolism, and I know that you guys say that it's not the best option for women because of the hormone imbalances and that's what I'm scared of because it's been four years now and I'm fluctuating. So I'm not sure if, if I can find a way to reverse, to go back to like um, a normal metabolism. And I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, this is very, very typical um, experience that people have. Yeah. Fasting has tremendous spiritual benefits, right? The, the, the detachment from earthly things. But what's happened is we've turned it into a diet. So here's what happens to your body. This is why you felt so good when you did it initially. You felt good because uh, digestion can, in some cases, increase a little bit of inflammation, especially if there's some gut health issues. You probably were entering into a state of ketosis. And ketones, which is what your body produces when it doesn't have carbohydrates, can make the brain or the body feel sharper. And here's the real reason. It raises cortisol and it raises catecholamines like norepinephrine and epinephrine. And cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, they give you energy. Mm -hmm. They make you feel good. But what happens over time is those stress chemicals and hormones overwhelm your body and you start to succumb 
to the stress of not eating. Now, the way you back out is actually not that hard at all. You simply add some meals. And what you would want to do, if you want to do this slowly, is I would have a protein fat meal first thing in the first morning yeah. and, and avoid carbohydrates. Okay. Avoid carb. So I would have like, I don't know what your favorite sources of protein are, but I would have like eggs, cheese, avocado, or vegetables. Go ahead. You were going to say something. I, my weakness is carbs. So I love carbs. I can't be away from carbs. I think if I tried, I go crazy when I go back to carbs. But honestly, I try to follow this uh, protein-based diet, but there's something very strange is that whenever I eat protein, I think this is weird, but I feel like I am hungrier. Is that normal? <laughs> I think protein should fill me up, but I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to eat whole foods, but nothing, nothing, I think there's something wrong. No, no, nothing's wrong. Just eat more. Look, this is what I would do. I would start. I would. I would. I would start the day off with a very high protein, with some fat and some fiber breakfast. Then I would do that again, maybe a three or four hours later for lunch. Then when you have dinner, have your carbohydrates. Carbohydrates at night. I know there's this big belief that oh, don't eat carbs at night. Carbs at night are great because they actually induce. They help induce better sleep. In fact, if you're going to eat something an hour or two before bed, a carbohydrate meal at night would be a great way to do it. So you're basically going to have a protein, fat, fiber, protein, fat, fiber, and then dinner, you can have your carbohydrate with protein meal. And this will slowly get your body to feel a little bit. It'll, it'll balance insulin, blood sugar. You're not going to get the cortisol spikes like you're probably suffering from right now or the, or the irregular cortisol. And that'll be the way you ease your, your way in. It's going to take a little bit of time because... You've also developed a bit of a relationship with the restricting and then feeding yourself. And that takes a, 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 that's more of a psychological effect. And it'll take you maybe two or three weeks of doing this consistently. But that's that's basically I'm look, I'm like you. If I need to be sharp, I do better without any food. But if I do that for too long, it starts to wear my body down as well. And so what I tend to do, especially like, for example, today I'm gonna be doing a live presentation. There's gonna be about thousands of people watching. So what I've done for the past three days is eat mainly proteins and fats and avoided carbohydrates. And then today, after my last presentation, I'm going to have a, a meal that contains carbohydrates. So wow. I can I can work with yeah. it and manipulate it. But I, that's what I would, that's what I, if you were my client, that's what I have you do. I'd have you go high protein, <clears throat> fat, some fiber, then another high protein, fat, and fiber. And then, and then in, in the evening is when you can include your carbohydrates. Any idea on how many, I, how many calories a day you eat? Uh, honestly, I don't track. It's a way of detaching from uh, being so obsessive over food and what I eat. But I would say, uh, I would say, two thousand, maybe more, maybe. Okay. I think um, um, I stopped. I used to track, and it was uh, getting into yeah. my head too much. I get obsessive. I think it's a girl's thing. We can't be healthy with food. It's always it has a tendency to go toxic. And yeah. uh, like you said, it's psychological. Yeah. 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 I, so, so do this, get uh, about six to eight ounces of meat of some kind of meat or protein containing food for breakfast. And then again, for lunch, don't go lean, make, make, have some fat in it. If you need to add some olive oil or avocado or have like a ribeye or something like that, but about six to eight ounces in both meals will give you a nice, nice dose of protein. I remember one time you said something that stick with me till till today. You said that uh, it's a, a fasting is a good tool to differentiate between uh, um, hunger and cravings. Yeah, and this is so true because during my intermittent fasting, I noticed that most of my food is based on cravings. Yeah. Just because I can eat it. Mm -hmm. So, and I started doing what you once recommended, which is the uh, water fast for one day. So, sometimes I do that and it feels so good the next day when I start to eat because you feel like you were reborn again because yeah. of the, the detox of everything. So, I'm trying to tap into other things just to 
have this healthy relationship again. But I think I damaged myself with that too much disciplined uh, system that I went and because it was uh, you just a bit took it intense. too far. You just took it too far for too long. Yeah, you're, you're, by the way, right, you're, exactly, yeah. Yeah. your yeah. metabolism is fine. You didn't do any terrible no, damage. It'll, it'll recover. Yeah, you're you're totally fine. Uh, I think if you do what I said and you kind of go in that direction. Then after maybe yeah. a few weeks, uh, it's going to be look the psychological aspects going to be most challenging. But if you do what I say yeah, over I the next few weeks, like a, like and when I say a good protein meal, I don't mean like you know two eggs, like like you know, forty to fifty grams of protein with your mm -hmm. breakfast, and then again for lunch another forty to fifty grams of protein. Make sure there's some fat in there. Make sure there's some fiber. I like really well cooked vegetables, right? So really really well cooked vegetables with olive oil. Nice serving of meat or eggs. And that would be your meal. And then you do it again. And then what you'll find is you're not going to get that energy dip like you did, mm -hmm. it, like you would if you ate a big carbohydrate meal. You'll still feel that like energy, but you're not going to be um, overstressing your body like you have been with the fasting. And then dinner, have your dinner, have your, your d dinner with your carbohydrates and then go to bed two, three hours later. This is interesting. Fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This would be interesting for me because I never did... Uh, carbs at night. I did the opposite. I started with my carbs and then ended with protein and fat. So I'll I'll definitely try this one. Yes, give it a shot. Let, let us know what you think. I should. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, guys. Thank you always. You got it. Thanks. So for good calling. to see you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. She's. It says she's a, a a radio sports producer in Kuwait. Oh, is that what? Isn't that awesome? Joy four eleven. Did you see the the Jordan uh, uh, thing in the background while she was talking? Yeah, the light the sign. The oh no, I didn't. Yeah, dude. No, I That's didn't. so cool. I probably would have said something for that. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, I don't know if I like her fasting at all. No, uh, you know, I think that my goal, if she was a client of mine, would be to slowly get her out of, yeah. of this. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, has taken fasting uh to another one. and it's tough too because i get i get uh where she's coming from as far as uh you know i've had clients that if they start weighing and tracking it, 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 they obsess over it and then it makes it worse but it also makes it really challenging when you're trying to reverse someone out of this type of behavior because it's like as a coach i want to be able to explain what's going on and if i know the numbers i know what what we're doing i can say like well that's because we increased this many carbohydrates yep. or this many calories. Yep. And so hang well, in there. Well, she's in a state of unawareness. I mean, she said so herself. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I, oh, what we should have done, and I, I didn't think of it, is, is to put her in the forum so she goes through oh, this. She Doug, has, Doug, email her. Let her know. Yeah, to, let Just know because as she goes through this, obviously she'll get yeah. a chance to listen to this. As you go through this, um, the, the psychological part will be one of the most challenging. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, you might see things that you freak out and want to go back mm -hmm. the other direction that are totally normal and healthy and fine. And so that would be my biggest concern as I ease her back into introducing these meals uh, throughout the day yeah. is her yeah. going, Oh my God, this is too oh, much. Yeah. Go the other way. Having her consistently start with that breakfast is going to be a challenge. Like I know for me too, like That's after you cutting to it out yeah, yeah, for a long period of time, like it was convenient and also too, it just like, I felt better not eating. And then, and then it didn't work for me anymore. You know, and then it's just like, okay, well, we have to shift. And, and so it was like, you know, a, a deliberate chore for me to be like, okay, I have to like, I have to put, and it didn't feel good at first. And then, you know, once everything started to kind of turn and, and change, it was way better. Yeah. The whole like eat carbs early and then don't eat them at night. I feel better the reverse. If I have a high carb breakfast and lunch, I'm like, blah, all day long. So I, I save it. And then when I eat it at night, I feel perfectly fine. I know a lot of people like that. So yeah. look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our free fitness guides. Also, you can find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam.